What's up, everyone? Thank you so much for joining us. We are here to wind down our weekend at Bat City Comic Professionals over on Austin's East Side. I am Shannon, aka Small Press Shannon. I am here with my Sunday night partner in crime, Phil, aka Wednesday Phil. Yes, how's it going? Happy to be here. Ready to talk comics. I know. I'm excited. This is going to be... There's some There's some good stuff this week. There's a couple of new number ones that I'm really excited about that I can't wait to uh, talk to you about because we have not gotten to talk about comics this I know. week yet. Yes. And Been usually... very busy. Yeah. Usually we throw in um, some comments between the two of us like throughout the week, but it's been a... <laughs> A crazy, a crazy week for everybody. So, yes. um, I'm gonna uh, share this really fast. I don't know if you've shared it yet. Oh, Phil, I always but forget. Yeah, I always forget. Com come talk comics with us. I'm just upset because you now have a hair and makeup team. I know. I didn't know we could fit those in the budget. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, we can't. I got lucky, and um, <laughs> my little sister is a hairstylist. So. Um, shout out to Samantha and Bree for coming up and doing mine and Matt's hair for our wedding next weekend. Uh, super great. Uh, no, Chad, it is happening. Chad said, I didn't think that this was happening. No, we're just a little late because we literally just finished getting our hair done, uh, for next week. So I know it sounds, uh, <laughs> crazy, but we're trying to fit everything in, uh, with next weekend being three comic book day and... Matt and I, uh, Matt and mine's wedding. We are trying to make sure we can fit all of the things that we need to do in the next uh, five days. So, um, if you see us and we look exhausted, uh, bring Matt coffee and bring me not coffee. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but we uh, can't wait to celebrate all of those things with y'all next weekend. We'll be talking about all of them, those things, a little bit more. Um, but first things first, uh, it's wind down your weekend, so. We are actually drinking Girl and Dragon. It's a mall back. Um, and we got this uh, from Josh and Kaylee Wilson, I believe. This is one of uh, the birthday wines. My birthday was this past Wednesday, and I got a lot of wine for my birthday. So thank you, everybody, for uh, giving me all of the wine in in the world. Um, the only other drink that I got was I actually got the gift of Topo Chico because there is a Topo Chico <laughs> shortage and one of our customers who's amazing actually came in and brought me some bottles of Topo Chico to hold me over <laughs> from the shortage. So um, that was amazing. But I'm going to try this. It's good. <laughs> it's hard to tell. This is only probably the fifth or sixth wine that I've ever tasted in my life. Yeah, I like it, but it's dry. I don't know. How are you feeling? Are you liking the dry ones or the sweet ones better since you're just kind of starting to try wine? The one that we had last time was really good, which was, I think, a sweeter wine. Yeah, I think you liked the sweet one. Uh, yeah, yes. Lots of sweet. Less butter. I think the buttery taste, I, I don't... It's too much for you? Mm -hmm. I think that's fair because it, when it's like super soft, and, I totally get that. I really like this. Um, I like these dry wines a lot. I think because I there's so much sugar like in fruit anyway, so mm -hmm. like having it dry doesn't make it feel like I'm drinking something too sweet. Like those dessert wines are too much for me. And see, I think that would be what I would prefer is the the dessert yes. wines. Oh. Like birthday cake wine. <laughs> there Something is super one. gross. <laughs> we'll have to get the cupcake wine for you to taste. It's like a red velvet cupcake is, is the it? wine. Oh, and it's, see, that's it's, what I want. It's one of my favorites, actually. So it meets right in the middle of that. So we'll have to get that for us to do on the stream. Um, so, yeah, this is Girl and Dragon. And it is uh, Argentinian grapes, but they are... Um, grown and like imported into California where they actually make the wine and so uh, shout out to Josh and Kaylee Wilson and uh, for this great birthday present I'm gonna hand it to you to hide behind the TV I know I actually wish that this was a week that mom came out like I should have saved this one for when mom came out so we could celebrate Amelia Clark with girl and dragon wine mm -hmm. but um, we've got a not a lot of things to talk about tonight this is actually kind of a light week but we do have some really great prizes so um, we're going to kick it off and do that right now. I got a poster, and I'm going to let you hold it up while I read the question. But this is a Mighty Valkyries poster oh for the current ongoing series. This is like, a, you know, four issues into the series, so not that long of a poster. Um, and the first question is actually, um, where do I want to start? Let's start with... 
the first one. I'm just going to go in order this week. Um, what comic was the inspiration for Mars Attacks? So if you guys know the Mars Attacks cards, uh, there is a comic that was part of the inspiration for that. So if you can tell me what comic was the inspiration for Mars Attacks, you win this poster. I will once again, as I love to remind you all the time, tell you that I cannot see what you're doing. So if you need to look any of that up on the internet, on Wikipedia or Google or wherever you find your sources of information, you are welcome to do that and I will never know as long as you tell me the answer to the question. So I need to know the name of the comic and the issue for what comic was an, the inspiration for Mars Attacks. So uh, they are Topps cards. Uh, Richie just mentioned the Topps cards, yes. Oh, there you go, Gomez, yes. EC Comics Weird Science 16. Gomez, you're getting this Valkyries poster. Um, Yes, so we are, all of our questions tonight will actually be themed around Lynn Brown. Uh, Lynn Brown is the co-creator of Mars Attacks, of Garbage Pill Kids, of uh, Thunder Agents, and so many other things, and we are going to be talking about him a lot because he is going to be joining us this Saturday. For free comic book day. Yes, so we are going to have Lynn Brown out here uh celebrating Mars Attacks, Garbage Pail Kids, and on the like. Uh, he will be doing signings. So for $5, you can actually get Lynn Brown to sign whatever uh, Topps cards or Topps comics or um, other like Mars Attacks. Like he doesn't have like a you can't bring Mars Attacks like movies. If you want your movie signed by uh, Lynn Brown, you can totally bring like whatever um, kinds of things like that you want to get signed. It's just, it's $5. If you don't have something, we have... Um, Mars Attacks cards and wacky packages and Garbage Pill Kids um, and things like that that we will have on sale. We actually just got in some Garbage Pill Kids puzzles. So oh, you nice. can get some puzzles if you want. And oh, yeah. We have an entire binder. All of these oh will actually gosh. be on sale oh next week. And you can, I mean, you can come in and buy them now, but there is a whole collection of the Mars Attacks and uh, wacky packages cards. Um, I, we obviously, we don't, it's fine, you, yeah, to show that one page will be good. Um, but you can come through, ask for the binder, you can flip through it, and then you can pick out which, um, which card, like, you would like to get signed, and you can purchase the card from us, and then take it to Lynn, and, uh, get that signed. And wacky packages are really cool, you can find all kinds of weird things in them, and then I believe, um, Garbage Sorry, Pill Kids are on their way as And there's well. dinosaurs attacked. Di we have some dinosaurs attack cards, ooh, that's good to know, I had some, we had a guy in today that was talking about dinosaurs attacks. Uh, we learned some really cool things about that, Nigel and I and the guy were all looking at, uh, dinosaurs attacks, and, uh, awesome. Fun fact about that, before we get into comics, uh, Tim Burton actually wanted to make a dinosaurs attack movie. That was what he really wanted to do, and then Jurassic Park came out, and it was such a big deal that he decided to scrap Dinosaurs Attack and make Mars Attacks instead. So oh, it was actually almost Dinosaurs Attack and never Mars Attack. Can you imagine a world where maybe Jurassic Park never happened, and instead we got Dinosaurs Attacks? I, I can, and that timeline seems fun. Yeah, maybe a little more carefree than this one. Seems a little more chaotic than this one, <laughs> yes. I think is the word you're looking <laughs> yes. for, but there it is. So we're going to um, talk about some comics now. So you guys are not stuck here listening to us because we will talk about Lynn Brown and all of the amazing things he created yes. all night, and we are. So stay tuned for more <laughs> chances to win prizes. Uh, we're going to kick it off because it wouldn't be a, a live stream uh in this in this timeline, if we didn't have a Cullen Bun number one to tell you about on the stream, yet so, another one, yet another one, and this one is yet a different concept from all of the other ones, but this is um, a pushover, I guess is a good way to describe him. He's like that yes. super weak guy, never stands up for himself girlfriend cheating on him like people at work are mean to him and he just like is like the just the weakest guy in the room all the time and he gets possessed by a demon <laughs> yes yes he is possessed by a demon and he gains the powers and kind of likes it yeah demon uh, and kind of doesn't at the same time like he's like i like being authoritative not sure that i like all of the crazy things i did and the things he does are absurd yes <laughs> like, and um ultra violent as yeah. well 
And I like, though, that it's like the older violence is kind of like he, he's telling you the story about it instead of us having to, like, actually witness him doing all these ultraviolet right. things. And I like that because it doesn't, like, over overkill, no pun intended, on, <laughs> on the violence in that sense. Uh, I, the art in this book is really great. I think more than anything, that'll be the real winner for this series. Even if we, you know, you kind of expect middle of the road for Cullen Bunn, but I feel like this time at least the art is going to be spectacular. Yeah. It's, and it's going to be crazy. I agree. And and crazy is a good thing. I like that he's kind of, this whole thing kind of takes place as a conversation at a self-help group. Like, yes. I thought he was going to talk about being an alcoholic, and then he jumps into it, and I was like, oh, that's not, you're not an alcoholic at all. That's a completely different thing. Um, and so I thought it was cool. I had no idea what this was. This is one of those books that I was like, I don't know what I ordered, when, <laughs> but I ordered right. something. And, um... It's it was really like I was surprised because we've talked about kind of having like Cullen Bun uh, oversaturation mm -hmm. happening right now, and we both said like for the the Cullen Bun books, this is the one that like was the most intriguing from the beginning. Right, I definitely feel like this is the first issue where I was like, okay, I could, I feel like I can really continue with this. Mm -hmm. I'm a little unsure if he's going to deliver on the depth in this series. I'm afraid that he may play off on, you know, the ultra violence and the craziness and yeah. weirdness of it and kind of let the art do its thing. Um, but I do want to see this to the end. Yeah. And I'm curious to see if, because it is dark horse, a lot of the series coming out of dark horse recently have only been like four issues. Right. So I'm curious to see if this will be a mini. And I honestly think that like, they should just give Cullen Bun minis because a lot of times he falls off on like what he's doing and so I think that if he if it's like okay you have four issues because like one isn't enough for him to develop the story like right. when we had Eden but like uh, some of the ones that are really long I start it starts to like it seems like he loses the threads that he's pulling on at the beginning mm -hmm. so I'm like if this is a four part series that might be perfect for for what he's doing yeah, yeah. Anything beyond that may be too much, mm -hmm. but I I'm curious to see where this goes. Uh, this character is is likable. Yeah. But I'm not quite ready to root for him yet. Yeah, and that's that's a good distinguishable fact because a lot of times you're like, oh, well, you have to cheer for the the main mm -hmm. character. And I I like that I don't know if I am on his side. <laughs> right. Like. I don't know where he falls for me on, like, like you said, like, I want to know his story. Like, I do like him. I really like the way he wraps up this issue. Like, I love yes. the, the moment with the character at the end of the first issue. I was like, ooh, I'm, 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 I'm definitely intrigued by this, like, already. Um, and I kind of like just, like, the little look that the character gave. <laughs> yeah. Again, like you said, like, the art is really selling this because the artist is... This is an artist who's actually getting the story that the writer is telling. Yes. And he's he's giving you a really great way to see it, and it plays out really well along the way. Yeah, I think this would be a good one. Yeah. I'm definitely on board. This could be my favorite Colin Bond book. Ooh. Potentially. Let's see where that goes. In the sea of hundreds of Colin <laughs> right. Bond books. You have lots to choose from, especially right now. I think there's like 12 on the shelf. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> yes. Um, did you read this? Uh, I haven't actually read it. Uh, I kind of skimmed through it. This is a book. It's basically X-rated Spaceballs. Um, it's a lot of cussing, a lot of violence um, and nudity and crazy space nonsense. There's a character in this book that reminds me of uh, Lieutenant Dangle from Reno 911. Yeah. But if he was actually like a badass mm -hmm. and not just kind of a loser cop. Um, but yeah, it's super crazy and I mean, I think I'm an issue behind. I think I've read issue two. Um, but if you like crazy space nonsense, then this is the book for you. And everybody that's come in and, like, grabbed the first issue ended up coming back and getting, like, two and three. Mm -hmm. So the people who did enjoy it were, like, can you can't show anything no. in the, in the, in the There's issue. not a single... I skimmed through this. I was like, there has to be one page that I can show. No. No, and... and Nothing. I'm curious because I actually only read issue... <laughs> I only read issue one of this, and mm -hmm. I was like... 
I want to know if, like, the feeling of the commentary that was kind of writing in there, like, stays through it. But I'm like, I this is for me. I'm like, I'll wait until there's a couple issues so mm-hmm. then I can see, like, where it's going. Because I like that it was almost, like, commenting on the way celebrities can get away with anything. Yes. And um, the celebrityism in America. And so I was like, I really want to know if this actually continues that. But I need there to be, like, at least three or four issues out before I go back into it so that I can see if it's, like... Because, you know, and we're going to talk about it in a minute, but, like, with the heavy, like, it was, like, we was trying to be a little absurd. Yes. And yet there's this deeper story that lies in it. So I was like, I'm going to give this one a chance to, like, pile on so I can see if there's a deeper story in it before and or if it's just going to be absurdity. And so well, issue one had the, the hints of a deeper story, but I haven't read issues two and three yet because I wanted to give it some time. Issue two, I feel kind of strays away from that and just skimming through this and kind of looking at a few pages... I think it's gonna lean more towards absurd, yeah, and less of oh, here's there's a message in this book, you yeah. know, which I'm okay with because right. it doesn't always have to. No. Yeah. No. Sometimes you just need a little absurdity. Yes, <laughs> and this is the right book for that. <laughs> Turn your brain off, have a good time. I wish I could show you the interior art because there's a lot of crazy characters in this book, but no. But not <laughs> not and have Facebook keep us on the <laughs> no, internet. So. I can't. Not all robots. Yes, let's change from ridiculous to um, something with a message. Yeah, um, uh, and Mark Russell, of course, having a message. I am shocked to, well, you know, this this to me is Mark Russell doing what Mark Russell's really great at, which is social commentary. Yes. And he leans very heavily into this and does it with such a weird backdrop. Yeah. Like, I'm very intrigued by this story and I was nervous because the art in AWA Upshot has not been that's what's been kind of the the tricky part for me getting Mm -hmm. into AWA but Diodato Jr.'s art on this book I really like it and most of my favorite AWA titles have had Diodato on the art he did the art for Bad Mother and for um, Redemption Oh, okay. And, and is those, it similar to this? Yeah, they look exactly okay. like that. So it's it's such a good... Um, it's so interesting because we always have these, like, robot stories. Mm-hmm. You know, we get these, like, iRobot and things like that where it's like, oh, eventually we're all going to have a robot. And this is at the, like, point, like, after. After we already have the robots. And now the yes. robots have actually kind of taken over... And I love that it's like now they're the ones who go to work because everything has been farmed out to <laughs> robots. And we have a, a robot kind of main character. It mostly yes. follows him. And he has come to the point where he's now where most middle-aged humans get to. Where he's like, why do I have to go to work and do all this work and my family doesn't appreciate it? And he's at that like strained, exhausted, like nobody, like dad classic dad in <laughs> yes. a sitcom like nobody like he's Al Bundy almost essentially yeah. in like his feelings towards his family and like ugh I just did all this work and none of my family like appreciates it I'll just be in the garage <laughs> yes I did enjoy that and I, I like kind of this commentary on yeah robots now being like the father figures mm-hmm. and all humans are essentially either pets or like children. Yeah. And you're just like, they already they're tired of it. I, I love all the like random jabs at like modern society. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love all the characters. <laughs> I love all these characters and how they just you know the how the the two robots interact. I was gonna say the work. coworkers that like, like, yeah. How they like it's very human. And yet the whole time they're ragging on humans. Like, I I love early on in this issue, they're like, yeah, humans are lazy and boring. And essentially we've come in to save you because we're a superior race. And (laughs) it's actually really funny. This kind of brings me back to how I felt when I was reading his Flintstones. I was going to say, yeah, it's very much in that same vein. Yeah. And... And it's such a good, it's such a good story, and I really want to know, because, like, our robot is, like, he's fed up, but he's also, like, I don't understand why robots, like, attack their humans, Mm -hmm. or these things, and you start to see him, like, 
uh, deal with like, okay, well maybe I do get it because my family is like really awful. And so you just keep getting him like going up and down on all the emotions of like how to deal with his own stress. And I, I can't wait to see what happens. Um, it kind of feels even a little bit like a, a non-branded of The Visions. Yes. Um, because you yes. do have this like robot who is is like done like he's trying to have a family and yet the family doesn't it doesn't work and so he's kind of done with this this society and this family and all of that but you kind of get a little bit of of tom king's the vision feel from the story at the same yes. time yes and i i think that's really a good selling point i think this is going to be a a, a well-rounded series mm -hmm. you're going to get a lot of action you're going to get some some great humor and there's going to be a, a really solid message here because I'm already starting to see, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of it mirroring society with like, you know, the how the cops reacted yeah. when they responded. Oh and yeah, like, that was. Oh, they don't care. Yeah, that was totally 100 percent. Like it's got good social commentary built into it. And uh, with AWA Upshot starting to get uh, some of their titles optioned, I can see this one easily being something that gets turned into. Um, a movie or a Netflix show or something because we we love to see what happens when we give robots the power. Yes. And so I feel like this is one that we'll definitely see turn into something. Um, Tom Taylor, Seven Secrets. This is issue number 11. 11. Um, so if you haven't jumped onto it, I actually forgot it, but we do have, I believe, the Traded Volume 1 in stock. Um, this is one of my favorite Tom Taylor books ever. It's super good. Um, it's all about their seven secrets in the world, and if and they're put in these cases, and each case has a protector and a holder, and they have like the secret society that feels very like wanted, like like I just expect James McAvoy to be in the background of one of the issues. <laughs> um, I mean, maybe I just want James McAvoy <laughs> to be in the background, he doesn't. right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's and in that secret society, like there's a couple who had a kid and they're not allowed to do that because they're like a protector and a holder of a secret. Mm -hmm. um, and and so they end up like not like the kid has to be raised by the secret society. And so this is the kid's story, but at the same time, this is also the story of like in issue one or two like very early on um the the secret society is attacked and like there's somebody who knows about the secrets and he's trying they're like trying to get the secrets um reveal like steal the secrets and like reveal some of them and like if people find out about these secrets it'll definitely destroy the world and so it's got like this really like heavy stakes at all time but it also has this really great family story and i always say it's like wanted meets saga um because you get that like action packed wanted like secret society but you also have this kind of fantastical story ar around this kid who's like these are my parents and uh this is what they do and this is how like they came together and now i'm here and this is like what i do and and so it's really good and i actually was just talking to one of our subscribers today because they were two issues behind and i've been like begging them to catch up and so they finally caught up today and i was like please tell me like what you thought and like when you get done like tell me what you thought and they messaged me and were like oh my god I can't believe this this is this, like this like long message and I was like I know like it's one of those books like you want to talk to somebody about what happened right. like every issue so I've heard really great things about this has the art style always been like this mm -hmm. this kind of anime very anime the whole time boom looking art I, d I do like this I think I read the first issue or two and then I just, it kind of fell by the wayside. Yeah. Uh, but this is one I'll pick up and trade. So you feel 11 issues in, it's still going strong. It's still going strong. I actually like it better the further we get into it than really? I did in the beginning. Okay. In the beginning, I was like, okay, like I'm kind of sold. Like I want to see where this goes. And the longer it goes into the series, the more like now we're at the point of like, who, like how did these people who like stole the, like are trying to steal the secrets like how are they getting this information and like where so we're only we're only starting to see some of these like threads and we're losing characters and gaining new characters and so this this second arc has been incredibly strong and um you know a lot of the tom taylor stuff we've been seeing recently have been mini series that like connect together like mm -hmm. with deceased and things like that and so this is one of the um you know first in a while of like long series going ongoing series from tom taylor and i'm super excited because it has been so good of all those people reading nightwing like 
jump here and check it out too. I, I do like Tom Taylor. I like the deceased stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel like there's still a lot left in the series? There's so much left in the series. Really? Like we have just literally barely scratched the surface of like one secret and one situation. And this could go on for a really long time. Mm -hmm. Like it's definitely not ending in the next issue. Like it's going to be at least right. three volumes, probably more. Awesome. Yeah. I'm excited. Did you get to read this? I didn't. Okay. So, I am not really a fan of Ghost Rider. Okay. Um, I, I don't, not because I don't like Ghost Rider, just because I've never really read a lot about Ghost Rider, but this is our, you know, Native American female, um, Ghost Rider that we see in, um, she's been a Sorcerer Supreme and things like that. She came in, uh, during War of the Realms, I believe it was, where she really, she's been here before, but, like, we, they brought her back in War of the Realms and kind of made her a big okay. deal. And, um, she's been a Sorcerer Supreme and, a one of the Spirits of Vengeance, and this is, this is a one-shot, sort of, mm. um, not to, like, pull any spoilers into it, but this is a great story. Um, I, first of all, enjoy that cover more than anything, but this, this was such a good story because we learn about, you learn everything you need to know about the character that you might not have heard because she's having her internal monologue, but she is actually helping, uh, Johnny has a spirit that's consuming him that's making it, like, where he's attacking people and shouldn't be, and so she has to literally go inside of him both like physically and like spiritually and help him through this and battling this other demon um and it helps like her figure out some stuff about her but she still actually doesn't really like until going into this issue she had no idea like what her spirit of vengeance w vengeance was and like mm -hmm. where it came from and dr strange has been trying to help her figure it out and uh, they kind of reference it back and so they give you all the background story you need to know like throughout um, and yet you still move on to the thing. So this is definitely one of those, like, if you're not sure if you're into it, this is a good starting point. And I think that this character is going to be with us for a long time. Um, and we're going to see a lot from them coming up. Okay. And you said this was a one shot? Sort of. Okay. <laughs> so there's no, it hasn't. There been... will not be another Spirits of Vengeance spirit writer. But there will be more from this other... This character will probably be getting their own series after this. It's basically the way to say that. Okay. So. I'll be down for that. Maybe a team of uh, Ghost Riders. Because at this point, there's what? Like four or five of them? Yes. I don't think that's going to happen, but I can't explain to you why without spoiling the whole book. Okay. So, but I Say do no think more. this character will be getting their own series coming up. Um... All right, this is this is for you, buddy. Uh, this is Maria Lovett doing <laughs> what Maria Lovett does. Yes, which is beautiful art with a very weird story. It kind of gives you like Alice in Wonderland vibes. This is Alice in Wonderland, but kind of weird and creepy. In the same way, yeah, this is an homage to uh, the Mad Love. Yeah. Um, Oh, yeah. I didn't you know. specifically <laughs> requested it as the Harley cover. Oh, did I? Yeah, yeah. so you knew when you ordered yes. it. <laughs> that was a long time ago. It was, just months ago. ago. Um, this is, um, yeah, this is the, uh, it's very, much like the way Spirited Away is an Alice in Wonderland story, but it's very strange, and yes. um, this is that same kind of thing. Um, it's an Alice in Wonderland story, but it's told in the form of a dollhouse type setting yes and you kind of get a little bit of what's going on but you haven't you haven't witnessed like the full scope of, yeah. of what's happening but you're introduced to your main character um they don't really give you a whole lot i feel like the biggest issue with this issue is that one you don't you don't really get to see a lot of character development but you also really don't get to see a lot at all. And that's a Maria Lovett thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Maria Lovett, being an artist, tells more of the story through the art than through the story. And so a lot of times you're like, I don't really know what happened. And I don't really know if I'm going to find out. And, you know, we had Luna and we had Eros and Psyche, both of which have just recently ended. And for both of those stories, that's exactly how I felt the whole time is... 
if you and people would tell me like I read Eros and Psyche and I don't really know what it's about and I was like don't look at the words <laughs> yeah. look at the art if you look at the art first and you just like read the story through the art and then go back and read the story itself for like what actually happens in it the art really tells a story all in of itself and it's it's one of those books where if it were silent issues every time it would be great um, if you go in looking for a lot of words to explain it, you're not going to get it. This one more so, though, than the others, I feel actually told you more of the story than the other ones have. It kind of sets it up a little bit in mm -hmm. the beginning. Uh, you kind of get hints of it towards the end. Um, but, yeah, again, I'm, I kind of have an idea for where this is going to go. Mm -hmm. Uh, but again, I also just don't think I care. Yeah, it's just beautiful. I think I stopped even paying attention to the story of Arrows and Psyche like three issues in. I was like, I, I don't think I really care what's happening. I think I just enjoy looking mm -hmm. at this. And that's how I felt about this book. Like I was like, well, you know, the story's not really there. But the art in this book and the art that she always brings to her comics is... That's enough. Right. Luna was gorgeous. The, the oh, art in Luna yes. was so good. And half the time I was like, I think this is about a vampire cult. And I don't <laughs> really know. But I do know that uh, it's beautiful. Yes. Especially that final issue cover, the blue one, was just absolutely gorgeous. She is definitely one of those creators that I think I've blindly picked up every book. Mm -hmm. And every time I'm like, yeah, the story was okay. But and her cover E's are always an homage. Yes. So usually they're a movie homage. I'm wondering if this series is going to be um, all comic book homages because of the fact that this is that Harley and Joker. So I'm wondering if that's going to be the case or maybe they're going to homage like relationships that are bad um, okay. and that you fall that into. Cool. I don't know, but she always does some kind of homage. Well, she doesn't. Her cover artist for issue, the fifth variant of every issue is always an homage to, to some kind of movie or something. Right. So. Yeah, ooh, that's nice. Uh, uh, Chad said uh, English is not her first language. She asked her, He asked her to come on creative credit, and she very kindly declined, saying she wasn't confident in her ability to express herself in English. So she definitely communicates way more through her art. That's amazing. That makes it even better. <laughs> like I was already yeah. like I love that I love that she's making these beautiful stories that do translate to us um, even like with that not being her first language uh, thanks for sharing that Chad uh, Snelson this is a new Ahoy comic <laughs> yes comedy is dying if you are a fan of stand up comedy in any degree this is the book for you um, you follow Melville Snelson as he is on tour with other comics. Uh, the tour is called uh, the Get Woke or Get Broke Tour. Yeah. And he's kind of <laughs> the punk rock, anti-establishment type comedian where it's a lot of everything sucks. You know, let me complain about all the issues in my day-to-day -day life. Um, and, and and he's also he's an old he's the old comedian he's yes. the comedian you would have seen on stage in the 90s who made all of the politically incorrect jokes who's still trying to be a comedian now and doesn't understand why he can't use the same material <laughs> yes. like and that's really like a big part of who his character is because he doesn't and that's why the tour is called what it is because mm -hmm. he got in trouble for doing his same kind of material he's always done and yes. it, it's not acceptable you know it's it's not funny and it's not acceptable to to most audiences these days and so now he's on this tour where he has all of the minority groups with him that he thinks will like help improve that image that he's made for himself um but he hasn't made himself any better no, not at all. And it, he kind of reaches this point, the tipping point in mm -hmm. this first issue. Like, it's already going to go off the rails. And I'm I'm definitely interested to see where this goes. I'm a big fan of stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. He kind of reminds me of a mixture of, like, Mark Maron and, uh, oh, God, I think he's from Boston. Doug Stanhope oh, yeah. was another one of those guys who was very not, he was not PC at all. And he kind of just said how he felt. That's this guy. And you kind of want to hate him. But, but you also feel sorry for him enough yes. that you hope that he figures it out. 
Yes. Yeah. And and I'm on board for that. And I feel like Ahoy Comics usually doesn't go beyond. Ahoy an Comics arc or always two. has a point too. Mm-hmm. Like they're everything that they like. If they're gonna do this, like there there's going to be either he is going to have a redemption arc or he is not going to have a redemption arc and that is going to be the point of the message. Mm -hmm. Um, Everything that, you know, like there's some, my two favorite Ahoy comics, of course, being Second Coming, by far the first top uh, cup, but also Penultiman. I really, (laughs) really loved Penultiman and I think that that's a book that got missed uh, by a lot of people, which we have trades in stock if you want to read it, but Ahoy comics um, definitely just gives you that, like, hey, this is, like, this is a situation. Here's a person trying to deal with their situation, mm-hmm. and will they will they learn, or is this something that we all never learn from? And yes, and I'm kind of intrigued to see where he goes. I also think about this issue. One of my there was uh, Knock 'Em Dead. Yeah, was that the stand up comedy one? Mm-hmm. I remember reading that and not liking how they kind of showed his routine. Without they, telling the jokes. Yes, without really telling jokes. They kind of do that here where you're not getting the full joke. You're getting kind of tidbits and then the punchline. But I liked how it was done in mm-hmm. this one. I think they did it well to enough where I was like, oh, I see where you're going with this. Um, but I also want to see more of that. When I read this, I actually thought of you and um, was curious because I remember... Um, giving you knock them dead and you think coming back and saying i didn't like it because they didn't tell me any jokes yes and i wanted jokes and i was like but that's the point the point is that he's not good at it and so it doesn't matter because he's just doing dry bland material and you're like but i want to know how bad he is yes and so this when i read it i was like well at least they kind of give you a little bit where you're like oh i can see that that joke would not have landed and so it's such a good um thing so yeah, we have a question in uh, from Gomez that says, "Do you guys have a favorite comedian?" And I want you guys to answer that in the comments. If you have a favorite comedian, shout it out. David Cross, he is the most un PC comedian to walk this earth, but he is extremely funny. He's the crane. Hmm. The crane in Kung Fu Panda. Oh, is right. he? Yeah. I didn't know that. I just remember he's in the Alvin and the Chipmunks movie. I don't know if I have a favorite comedian. I'm trying to think of any comedians that I really like. Um, and I can't think of any. I mean, I like a lot of them, but I can't think of any of their names. So I'll come back. Um, no, yeah. Dude, Mitch Hedberg is Mitch Hedberg hilarious. is great. Bill Burr. Bill Burr is another one of my favorites. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to hand you this. Ooh. Okay. Ginny Zero, issue number four. And I think this is another Dark Horse book that is going to exceed beyond. Yes. The miniseries aspect, which is fantastic because I love this character. Um, I feel like up to this point, we've been kind of getting her backstory. They're setting you up to fall in love with the character. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm already rooting for Ginny Zero. I'm already a big fan of hers. She's cocky. She kind of reminds me of Jessica Jones. Yes, very much. Um, You know, she likes to drink and cuss, and she's very egotistical. And this issue is wonderful because they introduce basically a mech, a mech commander. I think he's mech commander one. Yeah, you're getting all your Ultraman. Right, I was like, you're getting all your classic kaiju stuff, except. The kaiju is completely different in this. Yes. Like, what is a kaiju is is um, is questionable. <laughs> yes. And it's one of those things where now you're rooting for the kaiju. You're rooting for the kaiju. And I love that she is so anti-establishment. And we do get that exact Jessica Jones. And, like, like if you watch the Jessica Jones show, you're getting the Jessica Jones and Trish uh, yes. friendship in this 100%. Mm-hmm. Like, they even, like, drew the girl to look like... The way that the actress who played Trish looks yes. like on on uh, Jessica Jones. So, um, but I I love this book. Every time I'm like, ooh, yay! Like there's just yeah. there's a new Jenny Zero. I'm so excited, and then it, it never disappoints. It doesn't. And now what I'm excited for is this issue is now going to open up the world mm-hmm. and introduce us to what's coming down the line. Yeah, and if you don't know what Jenny Zero is about, it's basically. Um, uh, a girl whose father was a part of a kaiju fighting organization 
and he had a special power and it looks like Ginny inherited that same power so now they are trying to force Ginny to join the organization that her father was a part of and uh, she's not a joiner mm-hmm. at all she's she's very Jessica Jones in that sense of uh, you know you've got your way of doing things and I've got mine yes. and your way is dumb <laughs> <laughs> my way is a lot cooler yeah so. Um, there was also a really unexpected thing that happened. Yes, don't spoil it. I'm not going to no. show it. No, oh my god, I'm so excited about that. I don't know if I can show any of the rest of it. I know, no, this is, right, the rest of the, sh- uh, um, yeah, I almost I'm said gonna, episode. I'm going to hold off. The rest of this issue is really like, like Phil said, it's what brings out that the, there's more to this universe. Mm-hmm. So, um, come grab issues one through four. Um, or if you're a trade waiter, you're probably almost there. So, yeah. um, let us know if you're waiting on the trade so we can make sure we order one for you because uh, that's the thing about trades. If we, which this issue, ha- this series has been flying off the shelf, so we will of course get trades. But we never know how many people actually want to trade, and that's like a bigger investment at the starting point. So it's always good to let Matter I know that you want to trade so that when we do those orders um i can make sure that i get a trade enough trades in stock for you um yes. so yeah check out jimmy zero sorry i was looking at all the i know the comedians, comedians that thing. People were saying. um yeah there's a lot of really good ones i like that Juan said enrique iglesias at first and <laughs> then had to correct that i thought that was great because i was like yes and then i was like no that's not right like in my brain like i had to think about it too so um, but a lot of love for Gabriel Iglesias in the comments. Um, and, of course, uh, we're seeing a lot of love for uh, Robin Williams as well. So Yes. His stand-up was... I wouldn't say his... He has one really great stand-up special in New York that I remember having the CD for. But what I really loved about Robin Williams is his performances on the Johnny Carson show. Like, when he went on with Johnny Carson... And I remember Carson in interviews was just like, yeah, he just kind of came up and just did whatever he wanted. He would just go off on a tangent and I would just sit back and let him do his thing. Uh, he's He is hilarious. Yes. I very much so miss Robin Williams being yeah. in this world. I'm going to hand you this. This is not funny at um, all. I haven't read this issue. Oh, man. Um, Good Asian, I'm going to not spoil issue four for you um, since Phil hasn't read it. But Good Asian issue four is out. And if you uh, don't know, this is a classic noir story. And uh, uh, throughout history, one of the things that they've always loved to do is use, um, you know, make Asian detectives in um, in noir in new our stories and this creative team wanted to explain what it would actually be like to be an asian detective in the 1930s because that was not a, a time where asian americans were accepted mm-hmm. at all um and there was so much you know uh, so many terrible things that were happening to Asian Americans and yet they never portray that in any of the noir movies or any of the movies really about Asians in the 1930s and so this creative team really wanted to explore that and so we have a detective who is an Asian man who was raised by a white family and so he became a detective and he is hated by a lot of people in the Asian community for feeling like he sold out to like help the the white police department and yet the people in the um the white communities don't accept him because he is asian so he's not really welcome anywhere and um he is trying to solve the mystery of a missing girl and it is leading to a lot of crazy things happening um within his community and with within his personal circle and it just keeps getting uh more and more of that like awesome like classic noir story and it's it is all in like you know mostly black and white with these little splashes of color that really um make it feel like you are watching this like classic noir 1930s mm-hmm. based movie and it's a very rich story there's a lot every issue like it takes a little bit of time to read through it because there's so much in each issue um and one of my favorite things is at the back of every issue they actually do historical um research and information about being uh, about different things that are happening in Asian Asian American culture in the 1930s and so you get a a history lesson for the back pages for the last like three or four uh, pages of every issue right which I do like and and I've always been a big fan of of noir films and I feel like 
it's a genre that's been around for so long that you kind of see a lot of the same things, especially with like Brew Baker too. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like every Brew Baker story I've read, I'm like, oh, I've read this before. Yeah. But I read this and I'm like, wow, this is a nice kind of refreshing outlook on such a dark and bleak genre. Right. It definitely rejuvenates the the genre of that mm -hmm. classic noir detective story that we aren't getting to see a lot right now. Like we're seeing a lot of it, but it, like you said it is coming off like the same story over and over again and this definitely like rejuvenates that idea mm -hmm. and is like what else can you do with it? There's so much storytelling that hasn't been done and this gives us a chance to see some of that. Yes. Yeah. And you can tell that they did their research, which is wonderful. Yes. Um, I'm going to ask you for some more wine before um, I let you Most talk definitely. about the book that you want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's the rule. Them's the rule. So you have to give me more wine or I hold your book hostage. So, um. Oh, is Nigel in charge of the laugh tracks now? Because no. if so, I need you to. I'm really funny, so be prepared. I'm also going to add some more wine. Ooh, Silco. Oh, we're getting booed. I order your comics, buddy, so you watch that laugh track. <laughs> so, all right, I'm going to let you take this, Phil, because this is, this is your book. Every live stream, I'm going to say this book can potentially be my favorite book. But then an issue of The Heavy comes out, and this goes back to being my favorite book. Because as each issue goes along, there's still that absurdity, but it's it's reaching the boiling point. It is. And I'm very excited. I love all of the characters in this. This second arc has actually so far been better than the first it, one. It has. And they added something new to the mix with these characters, which makes it fantastic <laughs> i when we started this book like i was like yeah you have to get me another bottle of wine guys <laughs> and so when when this book first launched i was like oh um okay like this is absurd but there's this little underlying scope of heart mm -hmm. and then issue two came out and i was like no this is just absurd and then issue three came out, and it was, like, mostly the heart side. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay, so you actually want to tell me a story. And it has completely become a story with absurd elements instead of an absurdity with story elements. Like we were saying, yes. worst dudes, it's just mostly just absurdity for the right. sake of absurdity. This has that absurdity, but it's starting to become minimized each issue where it's like that absurdity led to a purpose. And here we are. And so you you can't show this book. There's a lot of boobs. I can this issue. I can maybe try and find right like one page something. and I'll explain what it's about. I guess while you're doing that, um, if you don't know the heavy, uh, it's all about a guy who um, is murdered by a former friend slash partner or something, um, and it's on on his is it on his wedding day it's like right yeah, yeah he and the anniversary the anniversary one of, of those it's like one of those mm -hmm. like really important days and he's murdered and he ends up in a purgatory type situation and in that he's given the role of what's called a heavy and as you know with like what a heavy is they're they're usually the ones who go out and and enforce whatever like in a normal world what a crime boss would want right. them to do he they he's actually working as a heavy for god yes. <laughs> essentially and uh and then you find out that he is not the only one who was killed and the person that ends up being his partner is actually the very person who killed him Yes. And so now he's stuck with the person that he hates the most, possibly for all of eternity. And I mean, this is an appropriate can, page. But it's inappropriate. I guess you can show that. It's a bit of a spoiler, I guess. But and not really. They'll forget by the time they get to issue whatever we're on. Yes. Yeah. Um, hopefully. So, yeah. So this is, um, yeah, is it issue five? Seven. Seven. Yeah. Um, second arc. Yeah, second. There you go. So yeah, we're um, we've got these two characters that absolutely hate each other, and their job is to just make sure that absurdities don't become. It's kind of like Department and Truth in that like there's alternate versions of reality that could exist, mm -hmm. and their job is to make sure that they don't. And they're working for God to do this, so they have there's 
you know, all kinds of, there's a reality where you can't contract any diseases or even really get pregnant from having sex. So, like, what would happen if society had no limitations on the amount of sex they could have? Uh, which is issue two, which is the most absurd of the issues. And mm-hmm. um, just things like that. Like, then there's, like, Hitler, like, a world of, they have, they talk about how many times they've had to kill different kinds of Hitlers. And, um, and so, and since then, the story has just become more and more, and we're starting to see, like, who these two characters are. And is there a redeeming quality to either of them? I don't think so. Yeah. I think there was a chance for redemption, but I think shit has hit the fan. I feel like shit hit the fan, like, three issues ago, and then it's just like you just keep tossing more up into it. Right, there's a monkey just flinging yeah. poo at the fan at and this And it's point. just making it worse and worse, and by the end of this issue, you're like, oh, no, things are really about to take yeah. a turn for the worse. Uh, yeah, this is easily my favorite book the art's great and i'm impressed because max bemis prior to this i feel like wasn't the greatest comic book writer i feel like a lot of his series were either canceled he did um he did the full killer when they rebooted Mm -hmm. full killer a few years back he did that mini series and you're like okay maybe you're gonna just always be that bottom tier hey, we have these Z-list characters, mm-hmm. have fun, and he'll do a, a an indie book or two. This, this changes everything. Yeah. I feel like I will, moving forward, give him a chance even more because his book is just... This book is really good. I, as much, every time I'm like, I'm not going to like this issue, and then I'm like, dang it, I liked that issue, and I really want to not like it because <laughs> of... I want to not like it all in principle for issue two. Because of how absurd issue two was, and I can't, I can't even dislike issue two. I'm like See, issue, issue two got absurd, and you were like, "That's why I love yeah. it," and I was like, "That's why I don't <laughs> yeah, love it." And then issue three came around, and we were like, "Oh, we just met in the middle." Like yeah. this issue, issue three brought us both together to the point where it is, and so. And now it's a nice combination. Yes. You get a nice mixture of oh, here's this like existential thought process that you're going through. You're trying to grasp all of reality and how mm-hmm. everything works but you're also going around and you know killing a bunch of people right for the greater good of all of the dimensions right and uh Juan asked if they're for a trade of the book and i think i just ordered them but if not i will um let you know when they are out yes. put in this later um i'm gonna move this over here because i'm i mean, I, I, I guess did you read this I did not. I okay, ha- then I I'll do it read, quickly. Uh, issue two that either. Um, then I will do this really quickly. Out of Body is uh, Peter Milligan, and this is an aftershock title, and it's all about um, a a guy who's uh, possibly been attempted. Like, attempted murder was done on his life, and he is in a coma, and he's trying to figure out what happened to him, and he has a psychic girl who is helping him. Um, figure out what it was that happened and she's kind of teaching him how to like astral project his body so that he can figure this out but he only has a limited amount of time because it's an aftershock book so it ends on issue five Um, but also because if he doesn't figure it out before his life support is turned off then he'll die and at the same time there's like an evil sorcerer type guy who's trying to get him because apparently they if he he needs this particular person's body and this Ooh. this is what this book is about is this art i feel like this the art like this is what made me pick up issue one yes because i think josh was josh really loves high on this, this book, book right off the bat um I, I do need to read issue two i feel like by the end of issue one i was like well you know i don't know story-wise if i'm 100 percent on board yeah. but if I'm going to see two page spreads like this, then... You're in. Yeah, I'll keep going. I'll definitely keep and going. And it, it's it's one of those things where... Uh, issue one, I was like, eh, it's... You know, it's not... I don't know if it's, like, the greatest comic book I've ever read. And yet, here we are, like, issue three. And I'm like, oh, it's getting better. Like, there's, like, weird stuff that happens to him, like, to his body while he's in the hospital. Like, right. you see things like that. And there's, like... you Now you have, like I said, like, this evil sorcerer type guy who's trying to steal his body. And, like, this assistant to the sorcerer is trying to, like, catch the psychic chick. So there's, like, multiple layers of, like, everything that's going on. So it does have um, a little bit of that, like... 
like after shock like we have to tell the whole story in five issues kind of thing where it's like oh take take your time tell me a little bit more about this mm-hmm. like i'm gonna go down that rabbit hole like <laughs> let's just do it but yeah. they don't get to explore some of those but at the same time like i absolutely um think that this is a this is a great title and again the art is just phenomenal so it's worth like like chad said it's trippy fun like it's worth it to just check out this art every yeah. time and the story is good along the way aftershock's not gonna do you wrong if you pick up a book by Aftershock, you're probably going to enjoy it. Um, so, And you know that you're probably only committing to like five issues. So it's right. worth picking up. Okay. I will definitely keep going at some point. Um, this is from Heavy Metal. We've been talking about how there's so many Heavy Metal books coming out. This is from uh, their Magma Comics imprint. And this is all about a girl who is a trained spy assassin type character like this is just you're just watching a spy movie um and she is trying to take down a human trafficking ring and i was like i was like oh i don't remember why i picked this book when it came like when it came in i was was telling nigel before the stream i was like i don't remember why i picked this book but i really want to read it because um i've been like talking to the guy from magma the editor of magma comics uh denton tipton on LinkedIn a lot and he's been telling me about some of the cool titles they have coming out and I was like maybe I just got it because he mentioned it I was like I don't know and then I was like well and then I read the back and it said that she was trying to stop human trafficking I was like no I got it because this is about (laughs) a badass chick trying to stop human trafficking and uh you've got me and this is actually written by a former supermodel yeah that's what I, I was looking at this creative team and I don't know how to pronounce the artist name Butch Goose yeah Goose well he did Captain America yeah and I remember his artwork, and I don't remember seeing this style, but I'm definitely intrigued. It's, I, I'm curious by this creative team. You would actually really enjoy this, I think, because it is, um, she's she's so good. Like, the character is, like, they keep making, like, joke of, like, oh, she's the prodigy, oh, she's the prodigy, like, every, you can't, like, the, she's the, like, the perfect, like, assassin spy, like, we can't, and nobody can be better than her, and yet she's making all of these, she's also, like, we're starting, we have these hints that maybe she herself was, like, human trafficked, mm-hmm. and, or at least lost somebody that she really enjoyed, like, to human trafficking, And so she's after this person, and so you've got that, like, judgment-clouded kind of situation going on where she's this perfect assassin, but at the same time, she's, like, only this one-track mind if she has to, like, get this person, and she keeps making mistakes um, when she's, like, in the field, and she's, and, and doing these things, and because all she wants to do is protect everybody that matters to her, so, um... It was really good, and of course, it's it's heavy metal, so it's oversized. Right, like right, it's right. oversized, big, but also like thick book. Which can sometimes be difficult when it comes to bagging and boarding, and then boxing them up. Um, I feel like this is a character that's been around before. Though. Yes. Okay. Yes, I believe it said that um, this came out, and the character originally appeared in 2017. Okay. Same same writer. Um, actually, so she was a supermodel when she was, like, 15 years old, and her name's Jade, um, Lagardere? Yeah. And she was a supermodel when she was, like, 15, 16 years old, and then, uh, while she was also that young, she started writing scripts, and then she kind of circled back to creating comic books, uh, not that long ago, and I think that's amazing. Um, I think that... It's, I think my favorite thing about that is that we spend so much time talking about, like, oh, well, you can't be into comics because you're a girl. Or, and, oh, well, you definitely can't be into comics if you're a pretty girl. And then we've got this supermodel that's been writing comics forever. And it's like, uh, let me tell you how wrong you are, guys. Here it is. Here's a supermodel who creates m- comics for heavy metal. <laughs> like, Which is awesome. You can't, you can't get any better than that. So deal with it. Yes. <laughs> Uh, okay, I think we're we're getting... Oh, my God. Okay, so I love all of the rest of the books, and I don't know where to put them. So... Aren't they all by the same person as well? No. Two of the, oh, two no, of no, the no. four are. Half, yes. half and half. Yes. Um, so, Black Caravan, we don't love... We don't kill spiders. We don't love spiders. That's totally different. <laughs> we don't kill spiders. Uh, this is the same creator who did Phantom Starkiller. 
Yes. Um, which, yeah, Most of course, definitely. of course, Matt throws some applause in there for Most that. Definitely. Matt calls Phantom Star Killer his uh, favorite book ever. Um, <laughs> so uh, we don't kill spiders. I was not sure what this book was about uh, before I read it. And I remember I ordered it, and I ordered a ton just because Matt was like, that's the Phantom Star Killer guy. So I was like, cool, this is going to be interesting. And I didn't read, I never got to read Phantom Star Killer. We sold oh out of gosh. all of it all the time way before I ever got a copy. Second prints. So do yeah. we still have second prints? You do. Oh, I do, apparently. <laughs> well, I, can I touch it? Can I read it? Okay. Um, yeah, go crazy. It's, it's, first it's worth it. Big Wait, really? You have we a do have the big print. print. Yeah. Oh. Son of a gun. <laughs> yes, son <of> so, um, <laughs> Matt is applauding his own ownership of, of, of a comic. I love it. Um, this is all about uh, a Norse mythology, like, or Norse setting, not mythology at all. A Norse setting, and we've got these, uh, this, like, Viking community, and people start dying, and they call in an investigator essentially and they're like he's a former berserker so they think he's just going to come in and like kill everybody in the way and that's what they want but that's not who he is so now he's all about doing the investigation and so the story unfolds for us as it unfolds for him which I love mm -hmm. I love that we don't know anything that he doesn't know um, and so it's super cool that we get to see like as we get to follow along with him and meet the characters with him and uh I, Matt always says that Phantom Star Killer was so good because it gave you like all of the story and it like unfolds and you get this deep story and there's so much to it and this is and yeah and, and, and really fast and this is the same thing like you're like okay where are we who are we what are we doing and why is it important and you get all of that like so quickly like but again along the character's journey and also, I already want to cosplay this character. Mm -hmm. I want to cosplay the, the girl from the, yeah, the, the, the main, uh, the necromancer, the necromancer. Oh my yeah. God. Why don't I love that? We're starting to get more and more co uh, comics <laughs> about necromancers. Like, let's just keep going with that. Um, so I messaged, uh, the creator of this book on Instagram and was like, dude, those last few pages of just nothing but pink. Oh my god. With her is so fantastic and I want all of that. I also like this book too because when I started reading it, obviously Matt was like, It's the Phantom Star Killer guy, so I had to read it. Right. And I remember as I started reading it, I was like, Oh, it's gonna be a Norse story. Yeah. You know, like it's just gonna be kinda one of those. And then it immediately kinda turns to like a murder mystery. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay, now I'm on board. A murder mystery with witchcraft. Yes. So I was so because I was the same way. Yes. I was like, oh, I don't really know. Like I'm saving all of my Norse energy for like like Wonder Barbaric. Woman just took no. <laughs> yes. Actually yes. That's where all my attention um, is. which is also a necromancer and that's yes, why I'm in yeah. on that story as well. But um no Wonder Woman just did that deep, heavy arc that had um, the Norse mythology in it and I was like that was pushing like that was so much of that and I was like ooh are we going to get more of that because it might lose me along the way and then there was like you said there was that little shift in there and it became that murder mystery and it started talking about witchcraft and I was like I am so in Yeah, like I need all of it and I, I like both of these characters I like yes. the fact that we kind of have this you know, as you said, he was a berserker, but now he's kind of an older man. He's a little bit wiser. He's not quick to jump the gun. And I, I fell in love with both of these characters. Yes. And if we're going to kind of get, like, your buddy cop murder mystery. This is the team I want. This is the team you want. This is the team <laughs> I want. so fucking and cool. And really, if you like barbaric, but you're like... A ser you were like, I wish there was a serious version of Barbaric. Yes. This is your serious version of Barbaric because yeah. you do get a, a a berserker and a and a wit a necromancer teaming up. So you do get a little bit of that same kind of team up, but this mm -hmm. is the serious version of it. And and like you said, both characters are incredibly likable immediately. And the character designs too. I know I like want to cosplay great. her. Yeah, she's really cool. I love uh, I love the berserkers uh, bear. Hood. 
yeah. thing that he's kind of like. Right, because sometimes so you just think he's talking off. to a bear. Yes. Like she's like, there's yes. one scene, I was like, is she just talking to a bear right now? And then I was like, oh, no, that's the dude. Okay. Well, and, I, I love that she comments on it, too, mm-hmm. where she's like, you kill these animals and wear them right. as garments. And you're just like, wow, okay. But we don't do that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's like, well, our power comes from respecting mm-hmm. those. And I was like, oh, this book's so good. Yes. Uh, Chad wants to know, do you think this is in line with things that you've li- he's liked? Actually, yes, Chad, I think you would enjoy it. It doesn't have, like, the music, but the fact that you've kind of, I, I would say pick it up and, like, view through a copy because you do you do seem to like some of those, like, random off-the-wall, like, scout and uh, books like that every once in a while. So I'd say check it out. I can put one aside for you so you can see if it's something you would enjoy when you come in next time. Yeah, read it in the shop. I think you would, mm-hmm. you'll be pleasantly surprised with how good it is. Yeah, is he and read Murder Hobo. Yes, he, same writer. He did he Murder Hobo too. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know, that. know that. Yeah, interesting. Um, and to your point, like we always talk about on the stream about how the blues and purples and uh, yes. pinks are so key to comics right now, and it's this is be... a great. Yeah, this is an important book about that. This is going up. I just, I just back up the um, All right, and there are three incredibly amazing um, uh, issues uh, that came out this week, and I'm going to put this. I'm, I'm not giving y'all all the answers for the rest of the trivia questions. Um, so, okay. Chad, if it makes you feel any better, you can see my pile. Yes, and also, Chad, I got your message, but I wasn't around yesterday to nowhere near uh, using my phone. So, sorry, uh, but I will get back to you about it, but don't worry. <laughs> what what you said just don't worry about it um okay so there are three incredible books that came out this week you can rank them however you want from here on out um but starting with nice house on the lake number three is out this week um and basically what i have to say about this is that james tynion is a master class in writing and uh you should be reading this book i second that (laughs) most definitely um i i think the I mean, obviously, like everyone else, anything that's got Tiny and Zane on it, I I don't feel like I even need the three-issue rule. No. And with this book, I was in on issue one. Um, I like how he's mapping this story out. Yes. Um, And i got to be honest, I'm kind of hoping this is a miniseries. Twelve. It's twelve issues. Is it? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. That's about what I would want. Okay, I was like, do I tell you? Or do I let you like figure it out on your own? <laughs> like, no, it's a twelve issue series, and I'm very excited about it. Um, I love that we get that Department of Truth style art blended into it. I love that we get um, like it's got some of those like same like weird scattery art styles to it. Um, I love this particular issue because it does kind of talk about. Um, some so it, it's building that story. Every issue makes the universe so much bigger and yet so much smaller all at mm-hmm. the same time. And I don't know how Tanyan does that so well, um, but he does. Like every issue, I'm like, oh my god! Like you learn something more about each character, and you would think like we're not going anywhere. But every time you learn something, it like also draws you back into this like one piece of the puzzle. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you don't know what Nice House on the Lake is about. Uh, the world is ending and a group of people are in a house on a lake and somehow they are protected Yes. or are they? <laughs> yeah, you don't quite know. You just know that they were chosen for a particular reason. They were chosen. Um, and I feel like th- he's going to nicely set this up so you understand why he chose these, these people. Um, I'm definitely on board. Oh, 100%. I mean, if he did make this go on forever, I wouldn't care, uh, but I'm glad that it's only 12 <laughs> issues. And the icons on mm-hmm. the thing are the 12 issues. Oh. Mm-hmm. So, no idea. Is like, there 12 characters then, if I remember? I think okay. so. Mm-hmm. Yes, there's yeah. 12 characters. Okay, that's what I thought. One, yeah. one symbol for each character. Okay. Yes, and Juan said the connection he builds with each character and how they fit into his weird master plan is so fantastic. Well, just giving you another piece uh, to go crazy thinking about. And it's true. Like, we, so we, I'm not going to lie. We'll, we read this book, like, the second, like, it's in our hands. Like, we have to consume this book. And then we, Matt and I, will sit and talk about it for the next, like, three hours. <laughs> it's like, that's all. Like, we have to take a break from what we're doing and just talk about what this issue of Nice House on the Lake meant. And actually, it's usually Matt, myself, and Josh who read it. 
And I read it before Matt and Josh this week, and Josh was like, we do this as a family, Shannon! <laughs> like, he was so upset that, like, I didn't wait for them two to read it, and I was like, I'm just reading it and then waiting for y'all so we can talk about it. Mm-hmm. Like, it was like, we are definitely doing this as a bat family all the time. We will continue to talk about it. I just needed to not, I couldn't wait. <laughs> like, yeah. I had to make sure I got it in. So, But it's so true. Like, this is one of those books that, like, you could do an entire, and I want to, when it's done, just do a Nice House on the Lake book club. Yes. For like the whole once, series? For the whole series, yeah. once it's done, just do a Nice House on the Lake book club where we just dissect every single issue and how it plays into the whole. So um, if you haven't started it yet, we do have Second Prince of number one, and Second Prince of number two are on their way uh, at some point in the future. It might be this week. I don't know. Um, Chad will tell us later on when we get to what's coming out this week. Yes. I hope this gets optioned as well. Oh, everything Tiny and Touches gets optioned. So I know, but this is one that I think would do well with like HBO Max. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think you need a, I think you need a mini se- I think you need a TV show mm-hmm. to give us, yes, you I know, agree. like give me 12 one hour episodes 100 and flesh it all out each episode with each issue and you guys know i don't even watch one hour shows but i'm like yeah give me 12 one hour episodes <laughs> um this is my copy and i actually accidentally dropped my own copy so <gasps> when you hold it up the cover does curl um but i'm so excited about this book yes and it is scotty young it's the same team as um uh, Middle, West. Middle West, right? Yes, this is Scotty Young and Jorge Corona doing the Me You Love in the Dark. Me you love and in the dark. It, it's actually the same team entirely because the letter is mm-hmm. also uh, yes. the same letter from Middle West. Mm-hmm. And this book is going to be so good. Um, I agree. I'm so excited. The artwork, okay, Jorge Corona can draw everything that I read for the rest of my life, and I'd be fine with that. Yes. I love his art. I love that it's it's cartoonish. But also not at the same time. And it has these, like, just, just, it's so beautiful. Um, it wants us, I'm already all in on this book. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it is all about a girl who is an artist who needs inspiration. So she decides to move to another town and she looks at a house and the real estate agent tells her immediately, like, they say this house is haunted. And she's like, oh, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> and she's talking, like, the whole time, she's like talking to the ghost. And for the longest time, nothing happens. And then one day, it does. Something happens. And I can't wait. And I like it because there's a bit of creepiness, but also a bit of playfulness. Yeah. So by the end of this issue, you are aware of what is going to happen, but you don't know which way it's going to go. Yeah. You know, is this eventually going to take a turn for the worst? Or is this going to be kind of some bonding experience? Mm-hmm. Between, between the two of them. Between the two of them. And it's, it's beautifully done. And Scotty Young, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more because I do have traits of Middle West that I'm going to show in a minute. Um, but Scotty Young as a writer, like Scotty Young as an artist is amazing and we all love him. And the chibi creations that he has as an artist are fantastic. But Scotty Young as a writer blows Scotty Young as an artist out of the water. Yes. Like, I think so too because he has more time to flesh things yeah. out. I really think about what he's going to mm-hmm. put in each issue. Yeah. And I, I agree. I'm okay with him taking on just the writer position mm-hmm. for a while. Yeah. And letting others create for and, him. And I think that that's why he's moved to doing a lot of just covers. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so that he can develop some more books. Because Middle West, and again, I'm going to talk to you about it in a minute, but it's just such a phenomenal story. And if this has one-tenth of the heart of Middle West... I will recommend this book forever. Yes. Like, oh, uh, I'm so excited. And, and Juan says, like, as an artist, like, you could feel the main character struggle. Um, and just, like, hoping that somebody gave you some inspiration somewhere. And, uh, like, yeah, like, we didn't learn, um, we didn't learn too, too much about anything in it. But that is how I feel like Scotty Young rolls these out. Yeah. And, and then from there, he just, he gives you a ton of... And I, yeah, and I, I appreciate that about him because he gives you enough to say, I'll come back for more. Mm-hmm. But you're not, again, you don't really know what to expect. Right. You don't know why you're coming back, but you're coming back. Yes. And, and sometimes, like with Middle West, I was, I actually got um, an advanced copy of a trade for Middle West for um, the, and I read that. That's how I fell into Middle West. 
And so I had four issues to dive into all at one time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, my God. Whatever this is, (laughs) wherever it came from, this is perfection. And then... um, And this, I'm like having, but at the same time, like issue one, if you would have just gotten issue one of Middle West, you would have been like, I don't know what this is about. Right. And this has that same feel of like, I don't 100% know, but yet at the same time, I I completely identify with this character and I need to know what happens to them. Right. So. Yeah. I'm just going to put one of these in my box. (laughs) Nigel, Nigel shopping while we. (laughs) (laughs) It's a good decision. I think you'll really like it. Excellent decision. Congratulations. Also, if this can become like a Brubaker Phillips team. Yes. Where it's just like at least once a year we get a book from these two, I'm on board. Yeah. Take my money. Yes. (laughs) And also like, Matt, can you press my copy that I broke? Um, Cool. Um, And, of course, uh, my pick of the week. I've said this a thousand times. Every time it's out, it is my pick of the week. And it's out. So here we are, win number nine. So good. Um, James Tanyan, like I said, master class in writing. This is his uh, Miyazaki-style story. And, honestly, uh, I was talking about this this week without spoiling too much and don't flip too far to the end because Matt hasn't read this issue yet, so show only the beginning half of the issue, please. Um, issue in, in arc one, issue three was the issue where um, Tynion was like, hey, here's like, here's your heart. I'm going to make you laugh, cry, and then I'm going to like destroy you, and then I'm going to put you back together later on. And this is issue three of this arc. And Tynion's like, hey, remember remember that last issue three? Remember? Remember? I'm going to do it again. And so you're laughing, you're crying, you're learning a lot about the world, you're figuring out who all the characters are, and then Tynion's like, ha-ha! So there's so many feelings in this issue that you go through. And when Wind was really the... Wind was, for me, the turning point where I realized how good of a writer that James Tynion was, uh, that first arc. And... I got that from that issue three of the first arc because I've never had a comic book literally run the entire scope of emotions so strongly as issue three of wind and issue nine of wind is really doing that again and now I'm afraid of every arc that Tynion ever does that issue three will like because issue three of Department of Truth destroyed me yes so it's like issue three is where Tynion is like uh, you're stuck with me now. It's almost like he knows about your three issues. He issue knows my three issue rule. He's like, I'm going to get her every third issue. Uh huh. I'm going to make sure I rope her in. Right. He was like, ooh, that's Shannon's <laughs> cutting point. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I have to make sure that issue three is the book. Right. The book. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, if James Tynion did know that I had anything, like, or that I existed as, at all, I would be the happiest human ever. But he, he doesn't. Unless you're watching right now, James Tynion. And in which case, I love you. Please continue to do all of these amazing things forever. He's responsible to tweets. Right. He does respond to tweets. He's very good about that. Um, he is just, he's just a nice guy. He's just a nice he guy. He really is. And you can tell that he enjoys doing what he's doing. Like, he's, he's one of those guys that is a comic book creator and is a fan of... Comics. Yeah, and he creating. just loves doing it, mm-hmm. and I think that's wonderful. I mean, you can sit with him at, I don't know, now, because of where he's at, but I sat for a good 45 minutes talking to him about anything and everything, and he was so eager to, to tell me whatever I wanted to hear. So, um, I've only read the first arc of this. Uh, I'm I'm reading this one in trades, but it's definitely when the trade comes in, it'll be the it'll be I'll move it to the top of my reading pile. It's the best, um, hands down. James Tynion, whatever it is that he has coming out that week, it's the best. Um, and this book, this is your hope. We talk about all the time, like where's the book that's full of hope? Where's the character that like keeps going no matter what happens? And I always talk about how Kanto is one of those characters. Mm-hmm. Wind is also one of those characters. There's a reason that this was Bat City's pick of 2020, <laughs> and I mean you as Bat City, not me and Matt. Although that's not wrong either. <laughs> so cool. It's everyone's pick. It was everyone's pick. So let's give them something for listening to us talk about books for forever. Prize. All right, so I've got um, 
a copy of Ghost Rider Return of Vengeance, uh, also a Ghost Rider one shot, and a Siphon number one. Guys, I made these prizes huge this week because of reasons that we'll talk about later. So you can get a copy of Siphon number one and a copy of a uh, ghost writer spirits of return of the spirits of vengeance or whatever i just said that was called return of vengeance um if you can tell me the answer this to this question what lynn brown co-creation is technically a spin-off of wacky packages nigel can't answer because he wrote the questions with me this week um but what other uh what lynn brown co-creation is technically a spin-off of wacky packages if you can tell me the answer to that question, you win both of these uh, comics, Siphon being only a couple weeks old. But mm -hmm. I really want you all to jump in on it because it was a cool, interesting story, and I'm curious to see where it goes. And the Issue art. two should be coming out soon. I remember looking at the art on this book. The art I'm was really a, impressed. Yeah. Do you want to show them the art so sure. they know what they're getting? Yes. I feel like this was one where I opened to, up to it. That, like, a, like it that this. page? Wait, there may have been. Oh, it was this one. It was this one. I feel like this two-page spread is why I would pick up this book. And it's Top Cow, which surprisingly, did I, oh, I went to the wrong page. Turn it, you're one page off. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was, there you go. There it is. <laughs> there <laughs> it's completely it is. different. <laughs> yes. uh, Renee, you are correct. Uh, you can say that with confidence next time somebody <laughs> asks that question. Um, Yes, Garbage Pill Kids is actually a spinoff of Wacky Packages. It was supposed to be a card for Wacky Packages of a Garbage Pill Kid, and they thought that idea was so good that they needed to create a whole line of cards that was just Garbage Pill Kids. And, of course, that was at the time of the Cabbage Patch Kids, so they were like, no, this is going to be super awesome, super amazing. And um, I've loved already having all of the people who have come in when we talk about Lynn Brown being here for Free Comic Book Day. I've had so many people who are like, my entire childhood was trying to find all the Garbage Pill Kids or mm -hmm. find, trying to find my name on a Garbage Pill Kid. There are so many stories I've already heard about how people were impacted by Garbage Pill Kids as children that uh, please come on Saturday from 12 to 4 during Free Comic Book Day and tell Lynn Brown those stories uh, because I think that he would love to hear um just how much like your life was impacted by garbage bill kids and all of the fun that you've spent um we've had one of our subscribers today told me that him and his sister were trying to collect them all when they were kids so to this day he still if he sees something garbage bill kids of any kind he sends it to his sister like still to this day like nice. so that they have like this ongoing mm -hmm. like relationship built off of garbage bill kids and i'm super excited for like that person to get to meet Lynn Brown on Saturday uh, from 12 to 4. It's $5 for an autograph. We will have um, lots of cards from Mars Attacks and Wacky Packages and Garbage Pill Kids for you to purchase if you need something for Lynn to sign. Um, or you can bring your own uh, paraphernalia from any of those things and he will be signing them. Uh, come out, meet him, say hi, and also get your free comics because in case you didn't know, it's free comic book day this Saturday and I'm only going to say that 27,000 more times before the end of this live stream. Bum ba dum. Oh, I can finish this. In stock. And get refilled. Yes, that's why Do I handed have? it to you. Do we have? We a, have a oh. new bottle of wine because All there's right. four of us drinking this today. Um, this is well, Jolice okay. Vineyards. This is a Cab Sab. I think this one. This one, I believe, is from Brian Lasseter and CJ. This is another one of my birthday wines. Guys, they gave me a lot of wine for my birthday. So, it's a great um, choice for a gift. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I believe this one was Brian and CJ. Uh, if I got that wrong, I'm sorry. Um, but this is um, this is a Cab Sav from California. And um, I was told when I first started drinking wines, uh, Megan Hutchinson actually told me, get Cab Sabs from California and you'll like wine. And she wasn't wrong. Oh. Um, so uh, let me give you some of this to try, Phil. Are we going to review this one as well? We are. We're going to talk about whether or not we like this wine. So. Okay. Well, 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 I'm getting. I'm sorry. Well, I was. I was pour. I was looking at Nigel oh, when I grabbed the bottle, and so I was pouring you like a Nigel-sized bottle I'm, uh, glass of wine. I'm getting real close to yelling at Lunar. So, oh my God. <laughs> get ready. Okay. That sounds and accurate. Drink and the rest of the bottle. I don't actually have my free comic book day comics from DC yet, so that. That's a damn it, Lunar. <laughs> uh, they're coming tomorrow, so don't okay. worry. They, I have a tracking number. They will be here tomorrow. Don't worry. Um, 
But he's got, you know, you got to fill Matt's shoes somehow, right? Drink a lot of wine and yes. yell at DC. I feel it, though. I can feel that energy from this side of the table. <laughs> A lot of anger and hostility. <laughs> and Matt is not an angry person. He's not. He just has... But if you push those buttons... Just the right buttons, which Phil loves buttons. to do. <laughs> I have a notebook of all the buttons to push for Matt. You're not alone. We have other subscribers <laughs> who actually have written down lists of the buttons that will trigger Matt. So this is like an ongoing thing from the days of the Matt rants that people actually have like lists that they, they uh, want to see. But... We are not going to do that. Well, one of, I'll say this. One of my first bonding moments with Matt was when we were hanging out in the shop. And we both started going off on rants about paying taxes. <laughs> and Matt just went off. I mean, a good, like, 15 minutes of just talking about how messed up paying taxes are. And I was like, I like this guy. <laughs> He's angry at all the right things. It's true. You know? Um, this is good. Mm -hmm. This is... This is smooth without being buttery. It's and got the it's it's a hint smallest of buttery. hint of butter, mm -hmm. but it's not overpowering like that yeah. first one we had. Uh -huh. I really like this. It could also be because I'm a lightweight and I'm already pretty drunk. It's okay. We got home run in pizza <sighs> to wrap up the night. That's good. Yeah. It's good. It's, it's good. sweeter. It's, a, it's yes. sweeter than the one we just had, but not too sweet. What's this one called? Jolice? Jo Jolice. Truly. Yeah. Joliese. And it's Cab Sav. It's Cab Sav from California. It's, it's Jolie, yes, eh? And I, <laughs> I believe, like I said, it was uh, uh, given to me by uh, Brian Lasseter, one of our amazing subscribers, and his Good fiance choice. CJ. So who who enjoys wine? CJ enjoys wine, okay. so she um, made the choice. Uh, books in stock. We have a, one copy of Stillwater Number Nine in stock, but I just wanted you to know that Stillwater is a great book. It's written by Chip Zdarsky. <laughs> you don't need me to tell you it's good. Skybound X, this is issue five of five. So this is the end of our celebration. We've been celebrating 10 years of Skybound comics. This is the, the, the last issue doing it. This one I put in your box because it has a story from the six sidekicks of Sugar Keaton in it. Oh, nice. So each issue of Skybound X has had a story about Rick Grimes 2000, which has Rick Grimes with a lightsaber, which I remember the year 2000, and I <laughs> definitely did not get a lightsaber. Wait, seriously? That's what That's what is? Rick Grimes 2000 is, yes. It's Celebration of... Ten, the Skybound X is a <clears throat> Celebration of 10 Years of Skybound, so Rick Grimes 2000 is the main story, and then um, everything after that is the oh. actual creative teams behind Skybound stories doing a one-off story in their universe. And so every issue has different... This different stories. Cool. Yeah. I've I can honestly say I've never read Walking Dead before. But now that he has a lightsaber, but you might. Yeah. Like make where's that T V show? It's right in here. It's in your head, Phil. It's in your head. When's Rick Grimes two thousand coming out? I'm just saying, in two thousand I did not get a lightsaber, so this is bullshit. I mean mine was plastic. I didn't get my lightsabers <laughs> until 2004. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, speaking of Garbage Pill Kids, uh, MFKZ, which is obviously an acronym for a word you can say, um, is out again this week, and they have a variant that's Garbage Pill Kids. And again... Do they? It's right there in your hand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, <laughs> this is uh, Behemoth Comics. This is based off of the... It's a movie. The movie, movie starring Vin Diesel, animated yes. voice. Yes. Yeah. Um, it was actually way better than I thought it would be for issue one. Um, I thought it was going to be ridiculous and, like, not entertaining. And mm. I actually really care what happens to these characters. So I can't wait to jump into that. And it's a good movie. Issue two. It's definitely a good movie. Uh, this is uh, Joker's Puzzle Box. I don't know that we ever need more Joker books, but this is definitely the one I'm super, like, interested to see what happens. This is Matthew Rosenberg writing the Joker, and this is actually what? Chip Zdarsky doing the cover. Um, so I'm 100% oh. sold on all of those things. I mean, I uh, love Matthew Rosenberg. I know, which is why I brought it, because I knew you would love that. It's Joker, though. Can't we move on from Joker? We should. We should definitely move on from the Joker, but we haven't yet. Um, oh, and Gomez is already asking for that Joker. Yes, Gomez, I will throw Joker's puzzle box. And i got to stop showing all the answers to the trivia questions when I do that. Um, Gomez, <laughs> Gomez, will you FaceTime 
with me and read to me the Joker's puzzle box? Gomez will, actually. I would uh, appreciate that. This is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tell me why you love it so much. Uh, Freak Snow is the issue that we have here. This is one of those that it's really, honestly, just really going to sell you by the art. Mm -hmm. um, yes. It's such an interesting book. It's all about a guy who is losing his freaking mind during an apocalypse. Uh, it's a zombie apocalypse in the snow, and this is issue three. We do have issues one and two. Speaking of Cullen Bunn, there's another issue of Basilisk <laughs> out this week. This is uh, Cullen Bunn at Boom Studios. Pick a publisher, and I will show you your Cullen Bunn uh, book that goes with it. He said he'll also read you The Killing Joke if you want. Mm, wait. Will he do the voices? Yeah. <laughs> okay, now you are now you have to do voices, Gomez. It's on you. Uh, my favorite, Jeffrey Vereggi, uh Black Cat variant of Sinister War Issue 2. Mm. We've moved on necessarily from the moment of um, Issue 1 where we were taking off where Amazing Mary Jane left off. I'm curious to see if it will continue to vote back into that, but uh, if you're a Spider-Man fan, you need to read this. And if you are an Amazing Mary Jane fan, at least read what you want. Suicide Squad Get Joker is out. I don't know why we keep trying to force the Joker into the Suicide Squad, but it's here. Um, I always like the Suicide Squad because it doesn't have anything to do with anything else, but I'm um, curious because that looks like Banshee is on the Suicide Squad now. Um, Silver Banshee, like... It doesn't say Banshee. But like right there, that is, is that not yes. Silver Banshee? I think so. That's totally. Firefly, so. Wild Dog. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hold this this oh, way. Jason Todd. You guys tell me, but is that not Silver Banshee right there? Yeah, it's going to be. Okay. Ooh, it's so, Azarello. Yeah, so well, tell me what you guys think. Um, <laughs> if um, okay. if you've picked this up, let me know. I'm really curious if this is good. I haven't actually read it yet. Uh, the cover B of this was actually a Reservoir Dogs homage. Oh, really? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not, you can't see it. Okay. It's covered by another one. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I have enjoyed all of the Black Label DC books, so I'm curious to see if I will... Um, where this one will go as well. Yes, thank you, Renee. It is Silver Banshee. I'm very happy to hear that. Uh, we've got some more Star Wars Bounty Hun War of the Bounty Hunters books out this week. We've got actual Bounty Hunters and then the one shot for Forlom, Forlom and uh, Zuckus. Zuckus. I was like, is it Zuckus? Matt has been waiting for this one because Matt loves Forlom and Zuckus. So um, if you are not reading it, War of the Bounty Hunters spans across the all of the Star Wars titles and has one shots. There is a checklist in the back of the book that you need to make sure you're following along with if you are a War of the Bounty Hunters fan. It is all about uh, that moment, from that time frame from when Boba Fett acquires Carbonite Han Solo uh, to when we arrive uh, to Return of the Jedi. Right. Okay. So. I'm... This is like, what, 40 issue tie-in series? No, it's not that long. I think it's 24. It's really um, crazy. Let's see. Trade. Also, Gomez, obviously, yeah, is a product so of the 90s. I need Mark Hamill. Yeah, so, th and again, there's a checklist in the back. Um, I see Forlong. Yeah. Forlong? He's a giant orange fly robot android. <laughs> <Bounty Hunter. laughs> Fuck yes. <laughs> That's probably Zed Air, because y'all probably didn't hear Matt explaining who Forlong was, because he's too far away from the mic. But uh, Silk issue 5 of 5 is out. So, um,. If you are reading Silk, this is your wrap-up. If you're not reading Silk, it's wrapped up. So you now's the time to jump in. I love this character design. I love Silk. So. Uh, the Inyuk Lee Silk cover that's coming out, I want that costume as well because it's a super like sporty spice Silk yeah. costume, and I love it. Um, X-Men 2 is out. That's what that is, right? Yes. X-Men 2, this is the new X-Men team, and this is the Rogue Trading Card variant. So check that out. Uh, magic issue five is out. This is Jed McKay writing an actual magic, like the card game, magic story. Uh, this is the Immortal Hulk number forty nine with Amadeus Cho being way hotter than he has any right to be. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna say that. I was like, what is this super sexy Damn. Amadeus? See? Oh, it's in Yuckley, though. Yeah, it's in Yuckley, but he made all. And I love that he didn't make any of the girl covers mm. sexy. But he made, like, all the guy characters have had, like, the sexy covers, yeah. and I love that. Because he's not he typically a sexy character. No. 
He's kind of like the nerdy scientist He's type, nerd, right? Right, and so this one came in. We actually had an entire conversation about this cover during my bachelorette party yesterday. <laughs> so, Dude, uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe, give me this Immortal Hulk. Give me that, this Hulk. That's not the Scree, Cree Skrull guy? No, that's no. not Hulkling. That's not Hulkling? No. That's Hulkling. Yeah, uh, Sebastian. Yeah, Hyman. maybe it is Hulkling. No. I think it's Hulkling. No, it's Amadeus show. It's totally Amadeus show. Are you sure? What's the difference? Do they ever team up? Because it's an Immortal Hulk issue, and Hulkling isn't actually a Hulk, so... Oh. Um, also, because Amadeus Cho is Asian, and this is the Asian American oh, Pacific is Islander... Uh, weird issue. This is uh. the... Yeah. This is the AAPI. Also, I guess I should start there. Inya yeah, Lee is this? doing... Yeah. Inya Lee is doing all of the AAPI variants. That's the Asian American Pacific Islander... Um, Variants. So he is he is doing variants for all of the covers. Uh, there is a Jubilee one coming up on an X Men title. Don't worry, I ordered a lot. Uh, there is also a Marvel Voices coming out that's specifically for AAPI voices in Marvel Comics that is coming out. Um, I know AAPI Heritage Month ha month happened earlier this year. Marvel chose to hold back all of their stuff until right around the time that Shang Chi comes out as a support for Shang Chi. Um, so they are actually celebrating all of their AIP AIP AAPI voices um, leading into the release of Shang Chi in September, which uh, no sound no sound effect for yeah. So we are super. <laughs> Uh, super excited for uh, the new Shang-Chi movie coming out um, and this is Marvel is going to be doing all of their AAPI uh, a celebration leading up to that so that um, we just ordered the Marvel voices for that last week so you've got about two more weeks before those are released I'm very excited but there will be variant covers for all of the um, Asian Asian Pacific Islander characters coming up in the uh, next few weeks so if you're interested in those make sure you let us know um, Engine War issue 11. So I imagine we only have one left because they are all, uh, this is all about the signs of the zodiacs uh, being gods for our world. Or are they? Um, it's very wicked and divine esque, but with the zodiac signs specifically uh, overruling our society now. Is that so a Taurus cover? This is the Taurus cover. How could you tell? Um, <laughs> it could have been Capricorn. What? Aries? Air the Ram? Right. Aries. Right. Know. Is it Aries? Because yeah. this is the ram. One's a bull and one's a ram. Maybe it'll tell me. I was like, that looks like a ram, so it might be Aries. Um, but, yeah, so this has been uh, this has been a really cool series. I really enjoy it. Uh, I imagine it's only a 12-part series. I haven't actually seen proof of that, but I would, if you had to tell me that, um, if you told me Vault was doing a series about the Zodiac signs, I would assume it was only 12 issues long. Uh, James Tynion, Batman... It's amazing. They have all of the covers, Gomez. So just let me... Uh, they did... I do believe there was a Gemini cover. Uh, I think it might have actually been issue two. Um, this is Avengers, and uh, this is the Inyuk Lee AAPI. This is Jimmy Boo getting a cover. Fantastic. Yeah. So if you were a WandaVision fan... <clears throat> I... Um, Inyuk Lee is one of my favorite cover artists, for sure. I do like his covers. So... Um, Carnage, uh, this is Extreme Carnage Part 4 or 5. This is the Lasher series. Who wrote this one? I don't know. I don't know who that is. Chapman. Chapman, I don't know. Mooneyham's doing the art, though. Ooh. Chris Mooneyham. If you are a fan of any of the symbiote, Carnage symbiotes, you need to check out the Extreme Carnage series. We have all of it, and we also have, uh, the Carnage Red, White, and Blood. Uh, Commanders in Crisis, Steve Orlando. This series is really, really great. You need to jump on it if you have it. We have Trades for Volume 1. It's all about oh. the first minority president in each, like, universe, because mm -hmm. uh, this is a multiverse story, gets pulled through a timeline, uh, a portal to come to the last remaining planet Earth in existence throughout the multiverse. And the only way they can um, stop that planet from being destroyed is if they save empathy. Um, and empathy, I will just tell you this, in issue one, empathy, the emotion of empathy is put into the body of the man, and the man is murdered. So uh, we all screwed. That's sweet. And uh, it's a great <laughs> story. Steve Orlando is crushing the story. You should be reading it if you're not. You need to jump on it immediately. Uh, Deadpool, Black, White, and Blood. Is that Tom Taylor writing this? Yeah. All right. No. 
maybe. Yeah, Tom Taylor is the main writer. Oh, Ed Brisson has a, a story in this yeah. one. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, this is like all of the Wolf other Black, Picasso. White, and Bloods uh, where there's multiple writers in each uh, story. They're little um, one-offs from different writers, and this one has That's a cool whole page. bunch of stuff. If you're a Deadpool, Deadpool fan, you got to get on this. I do appreciate that they have been doing this for a lot of different characters. Uh, it's what got me into Carnage. Carnage. Um, and I, I think for me it's the appeal of the creators that they put on these books. Mm-hmm. You know, because every time I was like, well, maybe I'll stop this Carnage series because I'm not fully invested. But then they're like, oh, here's a Chip Zdarsky story. And I'm like, okay, yes, I, I need to read this now. Um and I, I like that it makes sense to go with someone like that pool as well. Yeah, absolutely. Any character that can be black, white, and blood, they're going to do. Yes. Um, and a lot of people, because we got the Harley Quinn one in, and everybody was like, oh, Harley Quinn's ripping DC. But they had actually released that. Harley Quinn does, uh, or d- ripping Marvel. Harley Quinn does the thing where she always mimics what's in the uh, Wolverine book. <laughs> so they did the yeah. old man Logan, and then they did the old lady right. Harley. So she actually did that. They actually did that series right after the Wolverine Black, White, and Blood started. And but the statues for Harley, Red, White, and have always been around. They've been around for forever. right because those are Harley's colors. And so they, but they did it right after the the Wolverine one came out. Um, but it was only digital. And so when the trades right. came out, that was the first time it had been in print. So everybody was like, "Oh, they're ripping off like the Carnage and all this stuff." And it was like actually like. It was in line with what they always do, where Harley like parodies what Wolverine just did. Uh, it so it's actually a few years old, but it just now came out in print. So I just had to throw that out there. Um, Green Lantern issue five is out. Um, if you're reading Green Lantern, then you know what it's about. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy uh, annual is out. This is a part of the uh, Infinite Destinies, which is all about who's got the Infinity Stones and who's going to be holding them. Uh, it's expanded across all of the annuals in Marvel recently, um, and uh, also Black Cat. So it goes through Black Cat and all of the uh, annuals for all the characters. Uh, Justice League Infinity, this is issue two, and this Justice League is the uh, Demetrius. So there are three Justice League books out right now. This one is a there's regular Justice League by Ben Dis, I believe. Um, and then there's the Chip Zdarsky Justice League story, and now Demetrius also has a Justice League story out right now. And I always love when Demetrius does anything, anything. Justice League related. <laughs> Uh, okay, anyway. Seven to Eternity. Guess what? It's still there. <laughs> you forgot because Slowly it's been so long. Trucking along. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then uh, Red Room is out. Um, this is issue three. I think. Um, this is uh, a Ed crazy Piscor. Ed Piscor doing, doing what he does. Some crazy stuff. Um, the Golem Walks Among Us. This is from that outer verse of the uh, Hellboy universe. Uh, Mag- Mike Magnolia Minol- book. Uh, Savage Avengers issue 22. Uh, that is also out this week. Uh, Ram V doing that amazing thing he does uh, with Swamp Thing issue 6. This is definitely an incredible uh, Swamp Thing story. And if you haven't started reading it yet, um, you need to grab it, or at least now that we're at issue six, we're probably going to have trade soon. So uh, make sure you get that uh, trade when it does come out. Let us know if you want it because this is all about the new, the future state um, Swamp Thing. So it goes back in time to where he first actually becomes Swamp Thing, and he is not dead. Like he right. he can transform from human to Swamp Thing. Like he can, he's not completely swamp thing he wasn't saved by the green in that capacity but he is slowly turned like he is able to go back and forth between the two which makes her a really interesting swamp thing so um yeah read that and it's ram v so it's good uh the conjuring the lover number three this is uh dc has the rights to the conjuring that's what i have to say about that weird yeah i would have never guessed I'm intrigued, though. I think DC's been doing a great job with their horror books. Absolutely. So. And then uh, Crime Syndicate issue six is out. You guys are all loving Crime Syndicate. Syndicate, um, And uh, therefore, you know what it's about. It's good. Obviously, I'm not reading Crime Syndicate, if you didn't catch that, from how much I knew nothing about what that was about. <laughs> Thanks. That's great. 
<laughs> and apparently Phil's captivated by the cover. I was just trying to figure out maybe what this series was about. Because this is the... Was this Earth 2 Superman? No. It's not... I don't know. If you're reading Crime Syndicate, if you can drop what you think it's about into the comments... Because it's with Owlman, right? He's on the same Justice League team with Owlman. If it's I'm not mistaken... This is the, they're gonna tell us in the comments. Okay. Somebody's Earth gonna three. Thank you, Chad. Yeah. See, you can always count on Chad to give you your Thank DC you, knowledge. Chad. Thank you, Chad. And uh, speaking of giving things, we're gonna give you something for listening to us talk about a bunch of comics we obviously didn't read this week. Prize! <laughs> I told you every time. All right, we are going to give you. This is actually the poster that hung in the shop at one point. This is the other his. Nope, nope. This is the actual history of the Marvel universe. <laughs> Uh, this poster is freaking phenomenal. I love this poster, and it's very hard to give it to you, but I'm gonna. And I'm gonna give it to you if you can tell me the answer to this question. Lynn Brown, as you've mentioned, co-creator of uh, Mars Attacks and Garbage Pail Kids, amongst other amazing things, launched a classic country music program on what Austin area st radio station. I guess I should specify this radio because you probably wouldn't have thought of that on your own. Uh, Lynn Brown recently launched a classic country music program on what Austin area radio station. If you can tell me that, you get this History of the Marvel Universe poster. Um, Lower it down a little. Lower it down, apparently. Uh, I can't, can't see, see anything things. in front of me, Matt. No. <laughs> That's okay, Phil. We're, we looks, looks great. Looks great. Um, and Oh, do we already... No, no, it's not KLBJ, so you really... Oh, that's, a, that's a reasonable... <laughs> that was a regional... Go, reasonable... Reasonable... <laughs> that's a reasonable... We're on our it's second also, bottle of wine, people! <laughs> oh, speaking of which, is there a chance for me to get a refill? Oh, yeah. Oh, look at Phil, mm -hmm. moving on up in the wine. I'm sorry you had to ask. Um, no, right, okay. what are we... We're over here hosting a show called Wine Down Your Weekend, and we gotta ask for wine. I can't get uh, a no, wine refiller. No, Gomez, it's not KTSB um, or K K uh, V R X. But if you can tell me what state radio station Lynn Brown launched the classic country music program on, it is an Austin specific radio station, and it allows independent people to have shows. So that should uh, definitely help you figure out which one it is. Um, and if you guys didn't know, Lynn Brown recently moved to Austin. He retired here on the whole premise of the fact that he loves country music. Um, so that is, he's actually written a couple of history books on country music, which I kind of want to check out because I love classic country music, uh, and like history about that. So I'm curious about this. Nigel, you should find them for us. I bet they have them at book people if I had to, if I had to guess, especially now that he's local. See, you're already almost there. I mean, I, wouldn't, I don't want to take away the fun from you for finding those books. Okay, but I don't ever leave this building, <laughs> so you have to find it. <laughs> Chad said he's waiting on Bat City wine glasses with the symbol etched into it. Me too, Chad. Me too. I, I hear a wedding present? Uh, you have six days. I want, I want the wine down the weekend. Uh, so yeah, if you can tell me what Rady Austin radio station Lynn Brown launched a classic country music program on, you win this poster. And uh, I guess you still have... It's not midnight yet. I guess you still have a whole week. <laughs> um, so yeah. Anybody got any guesses? If you don't have a guess, I'm going to keep my poster. So... <laughs> now, <laughs> And Nigel can't guess because he was once again here when I answered the questions, or wrote the questions. I didn't. That poster might get replaced if nobody uh, answers correctly. Right. It's not KUT. <laughs> there is one other, I guess it's also, really, KUT is a really good guess. Uh, yes, it, it, there you go, Chad. Chad got it. And said, give it to Gomez or Renee. So Gomez or Renee, whichever one of you comments first gets this poster. Um, My arms were getting very tired. <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> that was I lower it by my face. Uh, it gave me a chance to close my eyes and rest a little. Yeah, so go Mazer Renee, whichever one of y'all comments first. Chad is getting it. It was uh, the Austin station specifically is co op radio. Um, Gomez is claiming that, so Gomez. Great radio station. Perfect. It's a Marvel thing, so I knew Gomez uh, that uh, Renee was probably going to pass that to you because he, he wants a, a Marvel fan to have it. So. Um, congratulations, Gomez. And uh, I can't wait to hear this show. I actually want to tune in and hear Lynn Brown talk about country music. 
it's always nice to hear people who are very passionate about the subject at hand talk about it and i remember reading an entire article where he was doing an interview and i think matt sent it to me was the mm-hmm. interview where he basically was like yeah i just love country music yeah. we can post that this week yeah, yeah we'll post that so you guys can it's check it out as well mm-hmm. i think nigel said he read the whole thing too um trades Limbron. in stock yeah. yes oh, yeah. So we've got, I said I was going to bring this last week and I forgot. So we have copies of The Amazing Mary Jane. This is all of the series because they did not keep it going, but they have kind of tied up those loose ends uh, during Sinister War. So you got to check this out. Uh, It is the first time Mary Jane has had some decent agency in a long time. Uh, A lot of people ask, where do I start with uh, X-Men? And uh, I wanted to bring out some of these X-Men volumes that we have with the current ongoing multiple series. We have uh, New Mutants Volume 1. We have Excalibur Volume 1. And we do actually have a Hellions Volume 2 in. So if you're looking for some good starting points on uh, X-Men, this is a good place to go. This is the one. Hellions. This definitely. is the only one I'm reading is Hellions. And I hear incredible things about them all the time. Uh, Loki, this is the Mistress of Mischief. This is uh, a lot of that female Loki. A lot of people are, like, really into Sylvie and what they saw in the the Loki TV show. So if you're wanting more female Lady Loki, this is where you go. Uh, Maestro Warren Pax, this is your uh, trade for that. So if you're uh, wanting to, if you missed it and you're wanting to catch up, here is your trade for Maestro Warren Pax. Um, speaking of qu- catching up, uh, Future State, this is Wonder Woman's Future State. This is everything you need out of Future State. And I'm going to say that right before, like, I tell you about another Future State trade. But this is actually the Yada Floor issues. Mm-hmm. Um, this is Immortal Wonder Woman. This is uh, Wonder Woman and Superman. Superman Wonder Woman, which is also Yada Floor and Jonathan. Which is the team up that I want. It's so good. So if you miss the Future State Wonder Woman stories, uh, get this. It's worth it. Immortal Wonder Woman was phenomenal. You get a lot of great Nubia moments. And then uh, you get some incredible Yada Floor Wonder Girl yes, uh, as Wonder Woman. the shirt I'm wearing because she is my favorite DC character. And who, and who made that shirt? Juan. Right. If you guys don't know Chongo ATX, you need to follow him. Find him on uh, T Public uh, Juan. If you're still in the chat, drop your link because this this shirt is not available at the not. moment. But uh, check it out and follow him for some incredible comic shirts. All the shirts that you wish existed that don't, Juan will be the one to make them for you. Um, and then uh, oh Future State, the next Batman. So this is a lot. Do you want to tell them what else in there? So you get Future State, the next Batman, one through four. Future State, Nightwing, one and two. Uh, Dark Detective 1 and 3, and it includes all the backup stories starring Batgirl, Grifter, The Outsiders, The Sirens, and The Arkham Knights, which was kind of one of my favorites uh, to come out of... uh, Keep talking. uh, To come out of the Future State stuff was The Arkham Knights. Yeah. Which is kind of like a a team of misfits. Very Suicide Squad, but uh, less ridiculous. Yeah, Gomez, I got you. We will definitely add this to your pool. Um, and uh, Ram, I saw that you wanted Excalibur, so we will add that for you as well. Um, cool. Yeah, this that is an incredible trade because the next Batman alone was worth it. But then the Grifter series was really good, like you said. The, yes. Uh, the yeah. Outsiders. Outsiders was really good. This was that was a really there was a lot of incredible stories in all of those things, and I was I was super into the next Batman, and then the next Batman Second Son, which came after, was super good too. I feel like people shit on the whole future state concept and before it ever even came out. And then it was really good, and you're and like, "Wait, can this be DC now?" And or that's just... DC's fault. And mm-hmm. this, I'm not. I'm, this isn't going to turn into a rant, I promise. But that's DC's fault because they named it 5G mm-hmm. when Dan DiDio was in charge, and that's dumb. Um, especially because <laughs> when your parent company is AT and T, do not name your story arcs 5G. Yeah, you right. cannot name your story arcs after. A cell phone terminology if you are owned by a cell phone company. <laughs> Don't do it. That's bad. And when Dan Tadia was let go from DC, they were like, we don't know what this uh, what this 
5G was. Nobody's ever, we've never had anything called 5G at DC before. We were mm-hmm. never going to do something like that. Why would we do that? And they were all like, we don't know where this came from. And then they were like, a week later, they were like, by the way, have y'all heard about Future State? And it was like, that's just 5G with a new name. <laughs> I'm glad that they still put it out, though, because I remember there was a period of time very briefly where when Dan DiDio was on his way out, they were uncertain if they were actually going to put any of this stuff out or that they yeah. were going to maybe pick and choose some of it and say, oh, you know, we'll do Yara Floor, we'll do some of the Jonathan Kent Superman mm-hmm. stuff. But other than that, and I know the, the Batman stuff as well, but I, I enjoyed the entire event. I'm sad it was only two months in the end because mm-hmm. I agree. The yeah. books that I'm picking up now from DC are the ones that are going to lead back to Future State. Yes. Like, I like the, the Supergirl and Wonder Girl and Batman, Second Son, and all of, like all of the DC titles that I'm actually reading right now, and Swamp Thing, they're all the ones that were the Future State titles yeah. that went back and are starting over. And so I actually, Future State made me excited for DC again. Yeah. Um, and in a way where like DC was losing me on anything that James Tynion's name wasn't on, uh, they <laughs> Tom Taylor. yeah they regained that in Future State for me, and um, I I just want to read all of the things that connect back to Future State now. So um, yeah, and Jose, I got you for uh, Batman and Wonder Woman stuff, so I will get you a trade of the next Batman and the Wonder Woman for your box. Um, and hi to you too. And last, but definitely 1000%, <laughs> not least, because I'm obsessed with this book, Middle West, Volume 1. Uh, like we said earlier, if you don't know Scotty Young as a writer, you should, because Scotty Young as a writer is a million times better than Scotty Young as an artist, and Scotty Young is a great artist. Uh, this is the creative team behind uh, the Me You Love in the Dark. It's Scotty Young and Jose, uh, Jorge Corona. Um, it's beautiful. This is honestly, we talk, um, as humans, we always say that anger and stuff that swells inside of us is like a storm brewing. Like we always say, oh, there's a storm brewing inside of you. You've got this fight. And Scotty Young took that metaphor and turned it into a true, like an actual story. And, uh, the main character in the story, his father turns into a giant tornado and lashes out at him. And then he gets... He finds out that that curse is generational, as anger and rage often are, and it is his whole journey to figuring out how to deal with that himself. And it's it's 18 issues, it's three volumes, whatever, however you want to look at that, and it's freaking gorgeous art and an amazing story. And if you haven't read Middle West, come in and check out um, and see this this book because it's it's so good. Yeah, and I'm hoping, because Image has been really good. Uh, one of my favorite Image books is the Luther Schrode stuff mm-hmm. that Justin Jordan and Trad Moore were doing. And there's that Trad one. Trad Moore, and, that's and, already the selling point. Yeah, and there was one other one where they had another, like, three, six-issue arcs, and they put them into these nice hardcovers. Mm-hmm. Image, I need. There is a hardcover of it? all of them. It's, like, $60 or something like I'll that. Uh, I think it's backordered. But That's fair. I will look and see, and if not, okay. yeah, there is a hardcover of all of Middle West. Just go ahead and put the order in, and in six months, it'll right. be in my Right, I'll just, I'll just go ahead and write that down <laughs> yeah, for please. you. To. Yes, please do. I actually, I looked at it today, and I was like, I swear to God, I ordered this for Phil. And I was like, maybe I'm imagining this, but I will look into it for you. Yeah. Anyway, that's all of our trades, so now we have something for you. Prize! All right, so we've got um, two indie books that you guys need to jump on. Uh, one is Silver City number one from Aftershock, and the other is Red Shift number one from Scout. Uh, this actually has parental, parental advisory warning on the back, and I'm not really sure why, because I remember reading this, and I mean, I definitely wouldn't give it to a child, but I don't know that you need to be, like, 18 plus to read it in any capacity, Hmm. but um, Image, um, or Scout does this thing where they wait two months after issue one releases before they give you issue two, and so we are about to the point where issue two of Red Shift would come out, so I thought this was a great time to give it away. 
and you will win both of these amazing indie books if you can tell me uh, the Mars Attacks cards were test marketed through what dummy corporation? So when they originally least released Mars Attacks cards, what was the name of the company that actually put them out? If you can tell me that, you can get both of these comics. Ba -da -da -ba -da. <laughs> that sticks in my head for like three days after this. So while we're waiting, I'm going to tell you about the comics coming out this week because Chad just dropped them in the com the comments. Uh, Infinite Frontier number four, Justice League Last Ride number four, which is the Chip Zdarsky one, Silver Coin number five, uh, I Am Batman number zero, Defenders number one, White number two, uh, and Campisi the Dragon Incident, which I'm really curious to see how that plays out, number one. And then uh, Bat Fan Favorites, Wonder Woman 777, which Michael Conrad tweeted last night that he is so excited and nervous to see what people have to say about Bat, uh, about Wonder Woman 7, 777 because he is convinced that people are going to say that it's an SJW attack on right-wing belief systems because of what they did and so I'm so excited to see what they did um, really really excited to see what Michael and Becky put in the next issue of Wonder Woman because it has been a phenomenal run of Wonder Woman uh, if you're not checking it out Michael Conrad and Becky Cloonan one of those amazing married couples who are making comics together have nailed every issue of Wonder Woman that they have touched uh, I mean, Becky Cloonan is an all star at this point absolutely um Batman 89 number one comes out. America Chavez made in the USA number five. Eve number four, which is a phenomenal story. Uh, one of the greatest stories ever. Canto uh, volume three is come issue two is coming out. Black Myths number three, which is um, Ahoy, I believe. Mm -hmm. And Daredevil number 33. Um, the answer that I need, uh, or the question that you have to answer, is the Mars Attacks cards were test marketed through what dummy corporation? The answer is not Tops, Gomez. Good or guess. Tubes. <laughs> or Tubes. Uh, yeah. Um, Mars Attacks cards, they were actually worried about how violent they would be appear and gory and everything so they didn't actually have the word tops on them are you are you yeah, sharing this sure i will share this uh i'm not going to show the you the answers on the back i'm not going to show you the back until after but this is actually nigel's very first <laughs> number one <laughs> tops uh not tops uh but mars attacks it is, tops. it is tops but it wasn't pre put out under the name tops no, Renee. This is, first Mars <laughs> this is the very first <laughs> Mars Attacks card, and this is Nigel's PC. This is his personal collection. Yeah, yes. uh, going to be signed by Lynn Brown. Going to be signed right. by Lynn Brown on Saturday between the hours of 12 and 4 during free comic book day. <laughs> there you go. Yes, Gomez, it is Bubbles Inc., and so I will flip this around it's so really you can see. It's really small. It's right there. It's really, really <laughs> small. But... That Congratulations, is Gomez. You yes. get this top <laughs> no, attack. No, no, you don't. You, you don't. Do not, you do not get that at all. Nigel will cry for hours. Um, yeah, so you are going to get a copy of Red Shift and of Siphon. I'm excited for you. I do appreciate Renee's answers of Umbrella Corp and yeah. Lex Corp. Yeah, yes. That. Those are close. <laughs> Both great answers. Both great Overall. answers, but no, they were uh, super worried about how violent uh, Mars Attacks was going to be, so they actually made up a thing. And Mars Attacks did actually get canceled for a bit for being too gory and too sexual in content, so it was actually canceled for a period of time. And they even um, had the artist repaint over the original paintings to reissue them and change them to be less risque. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh. But if you want to learn more about all of that, you can come talk to Lynn Brown on this Saturday during Free Comic Book Day from 12 to 4. Yes. Uh, $1 Book Club, we actually, I, I'm glad that this slide is in here because $1 Book Club would have been this week, but it is actually not going to be this week. Uh, as you may know, we do it on Zoom every other week, but it is canceled this week because Free Comic Book Day is this Saturday and uh, we don't have a... Uh, time for a book club on Thursday because we'll be prepping for free comic book day. 
Um, comic industry news. I don't know if you've heard this, Phil, but Lynn Brown, who is the co-creator <laughs> of Mars Attacks and Garbage Bell Kids, will actually be here on Saturday. What? Yeah, I know. I didn't know. I had New no idea. information. Whoa. Uh, so if you would like to meet, meet Lynn Brown, it is a going to be an amazing. This is this is actually like a piece. He is a piece of history for nerd culture, though. Yes. Very and much so. It's I can't wait to hear. I mean, he was the editor or cro chief creative officer. CCO. Yeah, he was a chief creative officer for Tops uh, for forty years. And so this man has created so many things. There were so many things like that he touched. Uh, Nigel and I were looking it up today, and it was like, oh, this thing. Like somebody would mention something, and we're like, oh, he had a hand in that too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Lynn Brown. Lynn Brown. Um, <laughs> Can we give him intro music? Oh, oh my God. Like, yeah. Like, what's your like rocking music? Yeah. Um, now <laughs> I need to know speech. in the comments, tell me what your walk-in music would be if you were a professional wrestler. I need <laughs> to know that. Um, very much, very much need to know what your walk-in music Firework by Katy Perry. 100% does. <laughs> and is, lots of sparklers going off. Which is funny because I was thinking, which Hanson song would by, be my. <laughs> anything off of Middle of Nowhere. Anything off of. Like, yeah, that's great. Um, but if you have a walk in music song that you would pick, uh, I would love to hear it. And. Um, is that yours? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh so yeah Lynn Brown will be here this Saturday is free comic book day for those of you who don't know what free comic book day is you can go to any comic shop for the most part in all of America and they will be giving away free comics um, just do me a favor and remember that uh, comic book stores did pay for those comics uh, they buy them so that you can have them for free as a celebration of comic books all the great things that have come out that year some of them are reprints of those number ones some of them are um, new titles that are coming later on. So this is a chance to either catch something that you wouldn't have picked up normally or catch something that's going to be coming out soon, like the great and wonderful uh, House of Slaughter book that is going to be a part of it. I'm super excited for it. Um, <laughs> yes, if you're a fan of Something is Killing the Children. Yeah. If you're a fan of Something is Killing the Children, uh, this is going to be the book to pick up for you. Uh, there are a lot of incredible titles. We Live has an issue. Uh, like I said, Enter the House of Slaughter. Uh, Red Room has an issue. Yep. There's a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of kids' books. So if you have little ones in your life, take them to a comic book store and Rosa get some. Park store. There, Yes, there's a, a, a book about Rosa Parks' life. Hmm? The Investigators? Investigators has a new title that's coming out, and you get a sample book during Free Comic Book Day. There are so many great books. This is a great time to get a friend in. If you already buy comics, take a friend with you to Free Comic Book Day and introduce them to a title that they might love. Uh, this is the chance to do that because it is free, and they don't have to invest in anything. Um, we will be open from 11 to 9 that day. Free comics will only last for as long as they last, so come out as soon as you can if you are a bat city subscriber we will be pulling titles for you in case you cannot make it um so don't worry if you are a subscriber we'll have them set aside for you for later on in the day but then there will be more for other people um and we can we will have those um out and ready for you during that day uh we will also have live music throughout the day we will have uh some other area creators will be here um, selling their books and talking about them. We'll have some kids activities um, and we have uh, uh, sausages from Smoky Denmark's which we're really excited about. Um, a lot of you have been in the shop since uh, we've been working with our friendly neighborhood sausage company um, and had a chance to chase Smoky Denmark's but if you haven't we will have free sausages slash sausage wraps from Smoky Denmark um, and a couple of other really exciting things and like we said this is not only a chance to pick up free comics but it is a chance to get uh, <laughs> to meet Lynn Brown the co-creator of Mars Attacks and Garbage Pail Kids and wow. other things uh, <laughs> I can't do these these, these sound, sound effects, effects are killing the after about five <laughs> glasses of wine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so come out for free comic day. It's absolutely free. If you show up to the shop, uh, just know that you can still shop the store. 
it will still be open you can come in you can also come in and meet lynn brown he'll be here from 12 to 4. if you are looking for free comics you're going to follow the driveway around to the back because the free comic book day tent will be set up in the backyard as long as well as the music and other activities so um follow around to the backyard you'll find uh, all of the free comic book day books and each one of those will be available while supplies last so um come check it out if you are not near us please go to your local comic shop and support them uh, wherever that may be just this is the time to support local comic shops and celebrate mm -hmm. the comic book industry so go out with whatever store is near you and uh, support them buy something when you go to the shop and show them your appreciation uh, let your local comic shop tell you about a book that you love find an employee volunteer whatever they have at their comic book shop ask them what their favorite book is and pick it up and give it a try mm -hmm. this is that's what free comic book day is all about is supporting comic book shops and learning about new titles so give it a go i don't know that don't we're out know of time that was necessary. we're apparently at the the period has ended <laughs> <laughs> Weird. Game over. Game All right, over. Let's, game let's, over, man. Game over, man. <laughs> That's it. Oh, shit. So, uh, something bad happened on the other side of the <laughs> mic, uh, the computer today. Um, but that's all. Join us this weekend. And then the other bit of news that we have to tell you is we will not be open next Sunday. So, Free Comic Book Day is all day Saturday. We will not be open as a store on Sunday. We are entirely closed because Sunday is Matt and I are getting married again. Yeah, I'm going to let you applause that. That's great. Um, it is, we call it our second print of our wedding because we got married last year and um, we, we, were, we had a few family members and friends that could be there, but because of the fact that you know it was we had to cancel everything for our wedding we got married in the backyard a wonderful love and support forever to our, our wonderful cousin lauren who opened up her backyard to let us get married there last year um but we are actually having a wedding and people keep asking us what is actually happening we are having a wedding a full-on <laughs> wedding ceremony with a reception and a dance uh kind of thing at posse east uh the home of redneck the home of uh, us really building our relationship outside of comic book stores. Um, we will be there. Uh, starts at 5. If you're in Austin, show up. Come it's going to run from 5 to whenever. Come hang out. We're going to be uh, on saying our vows again. We're going to be in our actual, like, the same clothes we wore for our original wedding. Um, and so the store will be closed because we are getting married. Um, and if you can't make it... There is a hashtag you can follow. Yes, follow the hashtag going live 2021. Um, that is all about our. Um, that's we want people who are there will post pictures. Get away from him. <laughs> I will say, because I'm going to go, this is my slight Shannon rant. Um, Matt and I, when we got married last year and we knew nobody could be there, the only thing that we were like, we're going to put all of our money into getting photos so that everybody in our friends and family group can <laughs> see them later on. And so it'll be like everybody was there. And uh, we don't have any photos. We paid a company. The company did not provide us with photos. They took terrible photos, and then they never gave them to us. So um, we and we never got our money back. So um, this year, if you follow the Going Live 2021 uh, hashtag, hopefully everybody who can attend will be posting photos and videos. And um, if somebody is able to use my phone we will actually be our live stream next weekend will actually be you all getting to see us get married at on the stage at posse east which i'm super excited about um, but like we said if you're in austin area and you want to come it starts at five the ceremony is at 5 30 come down to posse east uh buy something from the restaurants to support them and uh great bar food great bar great food great fantastic bar food great family um, and then hang out with us. Celebrate uh, the fact that we got married slash are getting married. Yes. Yeah. But don't come to the shop because it's closed. Yes. On next Sunday, yes. the 15th. But come on Saturday for free comic book day. Yeah. That's all I got. That's your comic <laughs> industry news. Congratulations. Price. Price. Thank you, Nigel. <laughs> Um, <laughs> all right, and we are going to give away a little Spidey bundle package. Nice. We've got an issue of Silk number four, which actually I love this cover, which is why we're giving it away. I do like this cover. And then Spider Man number 49, which is also Spider Man number something legacy number that mattered. 
Um, I don't remember what it was. 850. 850. Yay. It's a nice oversized issue. Yeah. Um, so, nice. and it's a really cool cover. Nice. Yeah. So, it is a cool cover. you get these comics if you can tell me Lynn Brown co-created what comic book series based on his love for the Phantom Empire. If you can tell me what comic book series Lynn Brown created based on his love for Phantom Empire, you get this book that Phil is reading on the live stream. I assume that's why I was here. Yeah, it's totally to, there for you to, to read, read right now, and definitely <laughs> not for somebody else to win as a prize. Uh, Gomez says he's going to catch the flower bouquet with his mouth. I also love how you spell bouquet, Gomez. <laughs> bouquet. That is how I'm going. <laughs> Hell yeah! Okay. I love it. Also, I'm not gonna throw it, uh, so good luck catching it. It'll probably be sitting flatly on a table. Uh, She'll gently toss it. Right. No, I'm not gonna toss it at all because I made that and it hangs on my wall. Uh, well, can we make a, a replica? I actually want to make a different one, but I don't know that I have time because free comic book day is on Saturday, so we'll see. But. Yes, Gomez. Oh, Gomez is sweeping the prizes Did he tonight. get everything tonight? No, Renee got one prize. Oh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, Gomez, you are getting this Spidey pack. And and Matt has been labeling the prizes as we went, so it's fantastic. They all say Gomez. They all say Gomez. <laughs> it's, it's, with the exception of the one that Renee won. So it's really easy to, to pay attention to. Um, really excited. That was cool. That was fun. Yes. Yeah. Brown on so, uh, yeah. So, to answer to the answer to the Oops. question is Thunder Agents is the name, and we were talking about this earlier. The reason Thunder is an acronym is because he was also really into the Man from Uncle. So, so he amazing. he he made uh, Thunder Agents uh, have the acronym because he wanted it to be like that. And uh, there was so many other books like Captain Marvel inspired him and a mm -hmm. bunch of other stuff. So it's really cool that that's what um, he came from. So. If you want to meet Lynn Brown and talk about all of these things, you can actually meet him Saturday this weekend coming up from 12 to 4 during Free Comic Book Day. We hope you come out and join us for Free Comic Book Day. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm very excited. Um, and if you are one of our regular volunteers and you want to come volunteer, please do. Shoot me a message. And say, I want to do something during Free Comic Book Day to help out, uh, and I will give you a job. Don't you worry. Uh, I'm going to let you know right now, Lynn Brown's handler, that position's already been filled. <laughs> Don't try. Um, Joshua Ramirez? Yeah. No. You're going to be, you're gonna be the, the, the royal butt swiper. Yes. Right? <laughs> I will be the one doing anything that Lynn Brown needs. Right. So he's the gopher. <laughs> <laughs> yes, whatever he needs all day, that will be me. <laughs> <laughs> but come out, join us. Like we said, there'll be live music, there'll be free comics, there'll be sausages yeah, from Smoky Denmark, <laughs> and of course, uh, kids' activities and free comics. So please come out and join us for that. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, and if you're in the Austin area, join us at Posse East on uh, uh, Sunday at 5 for uh, Matt and I getting married. Other than that, uh, we will see you here in two weeks from tonight. So have a great two weeks. Uh, obviously, I will be live a thousand times this Saturday, so you will actually see at least my face on the internet during Free Comic Book Day. But in case you don't get to see anybody else, Phil and I will see you in two weeks here um, at 9 o'clock to wind down your weekend. Yep. Until then. <coughs> bye. bye. Okay, bye. see you. Okay, see you. Okay, see you.